We come to you live from historic Crocker Field here in the heart of Fitchburg as FATV presents coverage of Fitchburg High School Red Raider football. And tonight it's homecoming as the crowd continues to file in here at Crocker Field. We bring you a matchup between two evenly touted sides, if you will. Evenly touted is a good way to put that, Daniel. Yep, it is the 0-5 Fitchburg Red Raiders taking on the 0-5 Westboro Rangers. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Daniel Bolak. Happy to have you along with us here today. Dr. Robert Hines is in for another week, filling in for John Gugarty, who continues on assignment, although he'll be coming back to Massachusetts in the coming days. I'm sure we're all excited to have Mr. Googerty back, and, and uh, fans of FATV are probably excited not to have me broadcasting alongside you. But, Daniel, thank you again for having me back. This is great. I mean, I mean we haven't gotten any complaints. No? No, nope, I have not seen a single complaint come across the wire. No kidding. Yes. Well, what do you have to do at FATV to get complaints? Uh, say bad things that the FCC doesn't like. Ah. But let's not go down that <laughs> road. Let's talk about the game at hand. So, Fitchburg comes to this game, as we mentioned, 0-5. Last time out, we were here at Historic Crocker Field, and we saw them fall 28-0 to the Panthers of Marlboro. The positives, they did hold Marlboro to just under 200 yards of offense in the contest. It was definitely the best performance the defense has had this season. The offense was able to put together some drives, but just weren't able to put any points on the board. Yeah, you know, and I said this last week, Dan, and I'll say it again. I don't think that score was an accurate representation of how well the Red Raiders played last week, except for a couple of... Well-documented lapses uh, where, you know, they, they racked up uh, enormous penalties there in the second quarter. The team played well. The defense played well. And, and really, I hope they can parlay that into a uh, solid performance tonight against Westboro. No question about it. As for Westboro, they come in with an 0-5 record as well. They opened the season with a three-game homestand against three teams who are not from Central Mass. They played against Burlington, Sharon, and Hopkinton. Lost them all, 19-0, 40-28, and 39-13, respectively. Went on the road for a couple of games, lost to a strong Auburn Rockets team 29-7. Then last time out, 42-7, they fell to the Wolves of Neshoba. Their lone score, Jake Barden, had a pick six for the blue and the red. And that's actually his second pick six of the season, interestingly enough. So Martin, a very dangerous player to watch on defense. That's something that I think that the Raiders will be looking out for will be that strong sophomore defensive back wearing number 33. As you mentioned, Dan, Westboro did open the season with some very tough matchups, as did Fitchburg, and I'm sure you're going to discuss that in a moment as well. But um, Westboro has played reasonably well. The, uh, you know, their, their record obviously is 0-5, but those are quality opponents that they've been up against. Yep, they have solid records. Of course, only one of those five teams, the Red Devils of Burlington, has a losing record. Sharon Hopkinton, both 4-1. and one. So is Auburn and Neshoba, 3-2. and two. The Raiders will have Neshoba next week. Fitchburg, on the other hand, opening against Lemonster, Wachusa, and Marlboro, all 4-1. and one. Shepherd Hill is 2-3. and three. St. John's 1-4, and four, but playing one of the toughest schedules in all of Central Mass. So things like that. I mean, both teams have played strong schedules. Fitchburg's schedule is ranked in the top half of teams in Division Three, And in fact, if they had a margin of victory, instead of having the, the minimum minus 14, if it was closer to, let's say, minus two or so, they would be in a playoff spot right now. Very interesting. Hey, look, we were watching warm-ups here tonight. I don't think that Red Raider team is getting down on themselves by any means. I think they're here to play, and they're going to compete tonight. Indeed, and we were talking before the game, and Fitchburg might have a different look on offense. We're just going to leave it like that for the moment, Ooh. but things might be a little different tonight. They're going to be changing up the strategy a little bit, and that could be something to try to catch Westboro on their toes. Appreciate that teaser, Daniel, as I'm sure the uh, the fans do. Now, I, I was watching the, uh, the FATV feed there. I don't know if you saw, Dan, there is a large chicken in the audience tonight. There is. There's got to be an answer for why that chicken is there. There is a good story behind that that I am not privy to, but it is definitely going to increase the, uh, let's see, I'm trying to find words. <laughs> now, I don't know if you saw, Dan, there were also a couple of Crayola crayons walking around. Yep, I think it's, well, you know, they're not going to have another home game until after Halloween, so this could also be doubling as Halloween. Now ah, that I, think I understand, it. I understand. And homecoming's a good time to have that, so... In any case, there's good energy at Crocker Field tonight. You got a you got a rather large chicken, several Crayola crayons, and you got a Fitchburg Red Raider football team that appears to want to compete tonight. Indeed. So Fitchburg and Westboro, they're meeting for the 21st time on the gridiron. And Fitchburg has won 12 of those 20 past meetings, including the last three. 
Last time Westboro won against Pittsburgh was back in 2018. That was a 35 to seven victory at Mawinney Field in Westboro. You know, in 2017 and 2018, I remember those were solid Red Raider teams that had a shot at making the playoffs only for our Westboro victory to derail their chances. And if it wasn't for Westboro there, then things could have been different. The last time Westboro was here at Crocker Field was 2019. That was a 29-27 overtime victory down to the wire and then some. That was actually the first game, the first Red Raider game I worked with FATV in any capacity. I was in the truck doing graphics that oh, night. Oh, no kidding. Excellent. Hey. As, uh, as folks can see on the telecast, the Red Raiders have just come onto the field. And Marlboro is, I'm sorry, Westboro is on the field as well. I imagine we will have a coin toss here momentarily. Indeed. Indeed we will. As we mentioned, both teams are 0-5. Oh, yeah. So, and as we mentioned, these are two teams that do pretty regularly play each other. This will be the seventh straight season in which they will meet. In fact, you know, we mentioned that, we may or may not have mentioned the last week, Marlboro and Fitchburg were meeting for the seventh straight season in terms of full seasons. But for Fitchburg and Westboro, they met during the fall two season. And so this will be the seventh straight season, all's told, that these two teams will be meeting. So they're well acquainted. Indeed they are. They are both members of the Midwash B, the Midland Wachusett League, the B Division. And uh, Neshoba and Marlboro are the two other members, so they are basically starting league play is what they've ended up doing, and that's how you get some of those similar opponents. For Westboro, they will be playing Marlboro next on the 28th. For those of you watching at home, it'll be the Red Raiders in their traditional home red or maroon jerseys with the gray pants, and it'll be Westboro with the white away jerseys and the appears to be navy blue pants. Navy blue pants. So we're getting the verdict of the coin toss from our referee, Rip Charters. And so it looks like Westboro is going to receive to start this contest. I'm looking at the flag across the field here at Crocker, Dan. It is basically still, unlike last week where there was a pretty significant breeze going on tonight, it appears that uh, the wind certainly won't play a role. Reasonably comfortable. The rain has conveniently cleared out to in time for this game, and we should have uh, good weather for the remainder of the evening. Yes, the field might be a little wet. We might see that lead to some stumbles, some trips as the game goes on, maybe some wet balls if they, you know, after some poor passes. But for the most part, the weather looks like it's going to be solid tonight. We had a lot of rain over the last 24 to 36 hours. But tonight, I think we've got some good football weather yet again. And what more could you really ask for? So at this point, we're now going to duck out for the national anthem. Kickoff is next here on FATV. Moments away here from kickoff at historic Crocker Field in Fitchburg. It's the Red Raiders of Fitchburg High School and the Rangers of Westboro High School. Daniel Bolak, Rob Hines here with you. I want to take a moment to thank our underwriters who help make all of our FATV remote productions possible, and they are Workers Credit Union, Rollstone Bank and Trust, UMass Memorial Health, Health Alliance, Clinton Hospital, North End Subaru, Unitil, 
Minuteman Press, and the Sentinel and Enterprise. Outstanding community-minded organizations all, Daniel. A good crowd here tonight for the homecoming game. A few more folks than were here last week for the Marlboro matchup. And uh, Westboro is fairly well represented. They've got their band here tonight. In addition to a battle on the gridiron, Dan, we mel we uh, may well see a battle of the bands. Yeah, we were thinking about it last week because we mentioned a couple of the members of the Marlboro team are also members of the band but they didn't bring their band with them last week, probably make their jobs a little bit easier. But this time around, Westboro did bring their band. And so Fitchburg is going to go from right to left in the first quarter of play. Westboro will go from left to right. And this time it'll be Shea Gagnor to kick off. We saw a different kicker last week, but it'll be Gagnor this time. Hunter Branley, we all the way back to receive for the Rangers. Pick that up on the hop around the 12-yard line. Try to burst it up the middle. Runs into a couple of Red Raiders at the 30-yard line. Held up about there. And that's where Westboro will start in this football game. Good coverage there by the, uh, the kickoff team uh, for Fitchburg, Dan. Um, nice run back, certainly. But uh, Fitchburg did also down the field to cover that kick. And... Uh, yeah, looks like they're at about, as you said, the 30, maybe the 31 yard line to get this first offensive series going. I'll agree with the 31 on that one. And so for Westboro, we expect to see Luke Molesky, the junior, taking the snaps, number one for, well, that's who I was expecting, but now I look at it, it's not gonna be number one, is it? No, they, uh, they pulled the old switcheroo on us, Daniel. And so handoff on first down up the middle. So that was number nine who looks like he's going to remain at quarterback, Marco Micucci, if I hopefully I have that pronunciation correct. I believe so. Marco Micucci, the quarterback, a junior wide receiver, because that's uh, that's the position you expect. He keeping himself on first down, I think, or was it a handoff? No, it was a handoff there, Dan. And uh, once again, the, uh, the greatest, uh, most well-laid plans in terms of our pregame preparation foiled in this, in this case by the Westboro Rangers, who put in a completely different quarterback than we were expecting to see. Indeed, so we look in the backfield. Bramley is in the backfield for the Rangers. We have whistles that will kill the play there, as back there as well as Alex Montalvo. I think it was Montalvo who had the carry on first down. Makuchi used the hard count there, and uh, several members of the right side of the defensive line for the Red Raiders appear to have jumped, but certainly I will wait for the man in the white hat to determine what their ruling will be. Mm -hmm. So conversation there with a couple of the referees, a couple of the officials. The referee is the man with the we'll white hat. Now. Ball start, offense, five yard penalty, repeat second down. Well, there you go. Maybe a little more than the hard count. Maybe he fooled members of his own offensive line, Daniel, but uh, it's going to back the Rangers up five. I did see a Raider jump on the replay, but he definitely didn't cross the neutral zone from what I saw. And thus, that may have made one of the Rangers flinch and that from there. And so. Luke Hadley was the guilty party on that one. Minus five yards, and so back to second and ten go the Rangers. And Calvo with the handoff, trying to bring it right up the middle. The mall's formed as both teams trying to force the, you know, the second effort. Raiders trying to get the tackle. Rangers trying to move their man forward. Gets a few yards, all told. Looks like they'll spot at the 34. Some mild extracurricular activity after that uh, play hit ended, Dan. Hopefully that's not a, uh, a sign of things to come tonight. I have to imagine over the last week, Greg Graham has had to have worked to reach to his team calm and discipline because it was indiscipline that, that uh, sunk the Raiders last week more than anything else. Completely agree. One receiver out to the far side. They've got six on the line. It'll be a pitch out to Bramley. Bramley going to be held up there as he tried to cross the line of scrimmage. Edwin Reyes, the senior defensive back, wrapping him up. Hey, that was great pursuit by Reyes there. Um, held him short of the first down, which is obviously the, uh, the goal here in that sort of situation. But great pursuit to get into the backfield. Great tackle by Edwin Reyes. Spotted on the 40-yard line, got a decent gain out of it. I'm not immediately seeing anything resembling a punter coming out onto the field for Westboro, Daniel. Is it possible that Westboro is going to try to go for it on fourth down in their own territory? 
little bit of a gamble, might also be trying to draw the Raiders off. We know that that's something that they could do, but they will run it. They'll go to Moncalvo up the middle. I think he's going to have it based on where the linesman was running from the far sideline. I think you are correct. At, at, at initial contact, it looked like the Red Raiders had a chance to hold him short of the line. But I agree with you. I saw the linesman come out. Linesman is now moving the chain, so they're going to get a first down out of that play. Yeah, spot at the 43-yard line, a gain of three on fourth down. Joe Beveridge, the third-year head coach, not afraid to gamble there. And Westboro will get the first down. Three minutes gone in the first quarter of play. And no score, first drive of the game. Smallboro lines up as we see. Multiple tight ends, only one receiver really split out there on the far side. Raider jump that time. May have crossed the neutral zone that time. That's, this one appears to be going against the Red Raiders, but we'll see. Before the stop, offside, defense, five yard penalty, still first down. Got caught once, but it's the first time we saw bad line work, it was the Rangers who were guilty, but this time it is the Red Raiders who will get marched off five yards. And they'll place it on the 48-yard line. Each team with a penalty against them. First down, five to go. Marco Micucci, the quarterback, will hand off. And that's a bit of trouble there on the exchange, as it looked like Hunter Bramley was having a lot of trouble controlling that. Yeah, never really got a hold of that football, was able to cover it up. And the, uh, the Rangers were very fortunate to keep possession there. But he never really had control of that football after that handoff. Look at the replay, nine handing off to six was not a nice exchange. And he gets wrapped up after gaining about one, maybe two yards. Knows the football's touching the 50, I'll give him the 50 on that one. Nice tackle there from Ali Cohill. Saw the situation and saw the opportunity to, uh, to take that runner down. Second down, about three to go. Again, run heavy formation is what Westboro likes to run here. They go with the inside plunge. And once again, it's Alex Montalvo, the senior running back, who's going to be able to plunge forward and get enough down at the Raider 45-yard line. O-line for Westboro definitely getting a push, as you'll see here, Dan, on the replay. There are some uh, rather large young men who are, uh, who are imposing their will thus far, at least on this drive on the, uh, on the Fitchburg D-line. We've got Montalvo four carries for 16 yards as it currently stands and methodically the Rangers make their way. About less than five minutes gone in this contest. Still the first drive of the contest. First play of the game in Raider territory and the pitch out to Bramley shakes off a tackle. Deleon trying to wrap him up. Deleon and Harvey Early getting in on that tackle. Around the 40 yard line but looks like there's some laundry on the field that needs to be attended to. Nice run there by Bramley. Unclear if it's gonna stay or not. We'll get the car. During the run, holding on the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul, replay first down. So in high school football, all holding calls are from the spot of the foul. And so some of those yards may very well count. We're just gonna have to see on the mark off how many of the yards will count. You imagine it's fairly frustrating for the Westboro Rangers and their coaching staff. They are uh, running the ball very, very effectively here, but they've, they've lost quite a bit of yards due to penalties. And so got it to the since they put the ball all the way back on the 43-yard line, the penalty actually happened in the backfield, so a loss of yards to start. Another pitch, Bramley again on the far side, had a little more space and is able to get back into Raider territory down around the 48. That could have been much more problematic there for the Red Raiders. There was a nice hit. I didn't get the uh, member of the Raiders secondary who made that hit. Let's see if we can get it on the replay. Time out, Fitchburg. That could have been substantially more, more difficult and problematic for the Red Raiders, if not for the hit by, see if I can get that number. Appears to have been Joshua Nardi able to uh, wrap, the, uh, wrap the ball carrier up there and, and prevent any further damage. Indeed so. As I continue to punch in the stats, I can tell you the Raiders have called their first time out of the contest with 6.20 to go in the first quarter and no score. But again, it's just been all Westboro with the football in this contest as they've been making their way ever so slowly, ever so methodically, a few yards at a time. But it looks like this could be another one of those games where ball control is going to be key. You would think, Dan, um, though as you mentioned in our pregame, 
it's possible that the Fitchburg Red Raiders may have a slightly different look on offense tonight. That may change the calculus just a bit, but thus far, it appears to be a very, very run-heavy offensive look. So already eight plays, 31 yards, and we've played 20 seconds short of half a quarter. That's five minutes and 40 seconds. Westboro has not had a passing play yet, have they, Dan? They have not. Yep. And again, uh, as we know, they've had two. So Andrew Pashoda was the starting quarterback initially, threw for 228 yards, but he is hurt. It's a bad time to be number 12 in a quarterback because uh, it was uh, Marlboro's quarterback wearing number 12 that got hurt, that couldn't play last week. And another pitch out to Bramley. This time, it doesn't work so well. He's wrapped up in the backfield for a two-yard loss. Yeah, nice pursuit there by the Red Raider defense. Among others, uh, Devani DeLeon able to get to the ball carrier there, make a great tackle. Yeah, DeLeon came from the other side of the line, uh, essentially unblocked, was able to get through to the backfield and knock, the, uh, knock Bramley for a loss there. Great play by the Red Raider D. They've been working Devani Delion into the defense a little more in the last couple of weeks, and that's really helped matters. As Delion has looked very solid out there, had a number of tackles last week for the Red and Gray. And he's turning into a bit of a dynamo on both sides of the football. That's something the Raiders are definitely going to be looking forward to, especially with Delion being a junior. Third down and 15 to go. They've got to get to the 35-yard line, does Marlboro. That's a bad snap, a lost football. And Mark Micucci's got to jump on that football. And I don't think the Rangers are going to go for it on fourth down again. Boy, you wouldn't think so. It's, it's fourth, and as your regular partner would say, roughly Lunenburg here. Again, Devani De Leon was uh, critical in the pursuit there. Um, actually was the one who, uh, who brought the quarterback down as if such was necessary. But uh, yeah, a little frustrating there for Westboro, seemingly moving the ball and then a couple of miscues, a couple of penalties, and they, uh, they're gonna punt it away. So we'll get the kick off there. It's uh, not the best punt in the world. And it will be downed at around the 28-yard line, and the penalty flag comes in at the very end. Very late penalty flag there, uh, roughly where the punt was downed. Unclear, I didn't see exactly what the infraction was going to be. <laughs> Folks hearing that, uh, that's the Westboro Band that time on our, on our broadcast tonight. They have chosen to join us here at Historic Crocker Field, which of course we appreciate. During the return. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the return team. That'll be half the distance to the goal. First down, Fitchburg. Now, that is an unfortunate way for the Fitchburg offense to start this game. They come out and, and potentially had decent field position that is now not so decent field position because of, uh, of a personal foul miscue. I didn't see anything necessarily, Dan. It might have been the situation that we saw last week where perhaps words were said that the officials did not appreciate. So on first down, it's handoff to Deleon from Luke Bolak. So we haven't quite seen what we might have been foreshadowing. But the Raiders are thinking about maybe doing some different personnel in the backfield, if you will. But on the first down run, it's a loss of a yard. There may be an injury, unfortunately, on the Fitchburg side here, Daniel. I think we're going to get an official's timeout here. Appears to be Devani De Leon, who's in some discomfort there. Training staff is on the way out. Nice start to the game for De Leon. We hope he can uh, he can shake this one off and, and and get back to action. But definitely in some discomfort right now. Oh, no question about it. Gives us a chance to discuss homecoming just a bit, Daniel. So I am less familiar, as you mentioned. I'm more of a Fitchburg State football fellow, though I do appreciate the opportunity to come out here tonight. So a Fitchburg High School homecoming at Historic Crocker Field. Can you give me some highlights as to what we can expect to see? It's a good question. Well, we're going to have some festivities at halftime for sure. No question about that. Deleon is able to come off on his own power. Looks to be okay. Thanks you to the FATV camera crew for you know, picking up the chicken and the Crayola crayons in the, uh, in the stands tonight. Much appreciated. So I'm just having some huge stat difficulties at the moment. 
And so now we're going to see a second down, about 11 to go. It's another handoff and trying to protect that football is the Red Raider who has a lot of trouble doing so, trying to fight off everyone. I think we saw a little bit again of Edwin Reyes. Yeah, it appeared to be Edwin Reyes with the ball. He was trying to do that sweep left play, but there was just way too much pursuit there by, by Westboro. So they strung it out and knocked him for maybe a yard or two of a loss. Raiders going backwards at the moment. Third down, 12 to go. Now we have whistle. Stoppage here. Looks like a timeout by timeout. the Red Raiders. Fitchburg. So Fitchburg is going to call another timeout. A lot of things going wrong. Well, maybe this gives them the opportunity to regroup a little bit and, and uh, fix a couple of things that they're not pleased with. I'm hoping this gives me a moment to fix a couple of things I'm not pleased with with my staff software. <laughs> well, I wish you luck with that, Daniel. Maybe while you're working on that and we have a little time during the timeout, um, I will again mention the um, the underwriters if that would be okay. Yep, or we can, we'll talk a little bit about the crew. I can tell you tonight's crew. Okay. Nate Glennie is our director. Travis Falk on audio and graphics. Caitlin Mobilia is doing replay. Andrew Govin and Robin Como are on the roof on the press box. Derek Terrell, Joe Tykowski, and Seth Rigby are on the field doing camera for us tonight. I can certainly paint a picture for what we're seeing around historic Crocker Field tonight. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a pretty good crowd. Um, several more than I think were, were present for the Marlboro game last week. Um, as mentioned earlier, there are people dressed up in all sorts of costumes, but the giant chicken, there's actually two chickens, Dan, uh, I'm seeing right now, but um, the one giant chicken was, was definitely my favorite. We're, we're back to action now, Daniel. All right. So Bolak scrambling to the right side, gonna find some room on the far boundary. Gonna be pushed out of bounds just past the 20 yard line. Not gonna be enough for a first down, but a good gain for red number 11. Yeah, you like to see the Red Raiders have a little success on offense there, because the first couple of plays were, were less than successful, but uh, yeah, still gonna set up a fourth down and the Red Raiders are gonna have a uh, decision to make here. My guess would be the punting unit will come on and it appears that they are. So they see Johnny L. Silvestri into punt for the first time today, and we, indeed we do. So. Hunter Bramley looks to be set deep for Westboro. He stands around the Raider 45 yard line. He's gonna give some yardage there. Silvestri is averaging just under 28 yards a punt. While well, the Raiders a little late to get on the field there. Play clock around less than five seconds and oh too much time has run off there, I guess. Yeah, another flag. You could see the frustration there on behalf of the Before punter, the snap, Silvestri. Illegal substitution against Pittsburgh. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. So an illegal substitution. Dan, help me understand what happened there. The, the player came in too late or was he the 12th man on the field? I'm not sure why that, that flag was thrown exactly. Yeah, it could have been, I think, could have been 12, could have been something like that, yeah. So we'll try it again here. Bramley set deep to receive the punt, high snap. And now Silvestri's oh. gonna throw it downfield. They've made this work once before, didn't make it work that time. So but there, there is another flag down, Daniel. We'll see what that's all about. Daniel, I don't know if that was a planned fake or a panic fake. Just a whole lot of things going wrong on that one. They've already successfully converted a fake punt this During year. During the play, illegal man downfield on the kick team. That's decline. First down, Westboro. Oh boy. So even if they had caught that football, it wasn't going to count. Doesn't make things any easier for, for the Raiders, but nonetheless. It's going to be great field position with 3.04 to go in the first quarter of play. No score. Fitchburg did well, really, even less with the football than Westboro was able to do on their first drive and now gifted tremendous field position. From the 16-yard line, run up the middle, as it looks like it is Alex Montalvo again. 
He's got that one. You can see Westboro's O-line continuing to work until the whistle blows, as you would expect. Nice gain on that play, and again, the O-line is just really exerting their will here uh, in the trenches. So just good, good work by the line and moving it all the way down to the eight yard line. Eight yard gain on first down will bring up second and a manageable two. Martha Micucci, the quarterback for Westboro and try to take it himself. Devani Delion, he's all right. And he'll show everybody that he's all right. <laughs> he's more than all right with a play like that. Not sure what happened. There may have been a miscue in the uh, in the offense there. It looked almost like the uh, the Westboro quarterback was looking for someone to pitch to, realized he didn't have someone to pitch to, and then pulled it back. Or maybe it was a planned quarterback run, but uh, certainly DeLeon not fooled by it. Yeah, I think that was, I do think it was planned the way that they set up. It was just a matter of it didn't really work out to plan. DeLeon, smart to it, pulls him down. I think it's a loss of about a yard. I think you're right. Brings up third, less than 10 feet to go for a first down. Westboro has kept it exclusively on the ground in this contest. Taking their time now with the snap. Moncalvo up the middle and just wrapped up by three Raiders. That looking for a line that never opened. Uh, yeah, it appears that was another loss on that play on third down. All right, so decision time again for the Ranger offense. It appears the offense will stay on the field. Fourth and about two, Daniel. Two sounds about right. They've already converted once on fourth down tonight. Just a little more to go. They go with the pitch on the left side. There's a lot of space for Bramley to run, and they'll take it all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. Eight yard yeah, touchdown the rush there for the Rangers. Rangers first to get on the board tonight. Westboro's only been shut out once this year. They're not going to make it a second time tonight on the Raiders' homecoming. The pitch out to Bramley. They hadn't run that play for a little while, not on this drive. The Raiders had to dial in near the end of the last drive, but not so this time. So place kicker is now in Aryan Batia for Westboro. Puts this one up. And he puts it through. Arian Batea has the extra point to make it seven to nothing. I appreciate the uh, help on the pronunciation there, Daniel. I know we spoke with uh, one of the assistant coaches from Westboro, and I, uh, I wrote it down and, and stumbled over my own phonetic spelling there. That happens. So a solid drive, just two and a half minutes, gifted only 16 yards, and Westboro makes the Raiders pay. They get the touchdown to make it seven to nothing. So Daniel, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I appreciate you having me come out last week and this week to sub in for the outstanding John Gugarty, who was uh, out on assignment. Um, but I tell you, I feel some degree of stress tonight, Daniel, that I need to bring my A game. I still want to be the guy you go to in case John is out of town again. So I'm thinking, can I make professional wrestling references? I know he enjoys doing that. Uh, on particularly long down and distance, I could make uh, comments about different local towns. I don't want to steal John's material, but I want to bring my game up to that level so I can continue to be a, uh, a fallback option for you all here at FATV. And you've got the you've got the playground, if you will, the sandbox to experiment with, <laughs> trying some different things out. If I use a professional wrestling reference, though, I, I may do it from my era. Because when Googerty does it, I, I don't even know half the names he, he's bringing around. But can I drop a few mid-70s professional wrestlers on you? Would that be OK? I might not get them either, but. <laughs> will there be fans watching FATV that will get my references? Possibly. So that one kicked down the far boundary, does not go out of bounds, and ultimately Doharian Wells has to pick that one up. 
and he slips around the 10 yard line. Yeah, I kind of question the judgment there. Um, Doherian Wells, I think, saw that that kickoff had a really good chance of going out of bounds, and I think it might have, but it took so long to set up, I think he started to think, hey, you know, obviously on a kickoff, you can't leave it bouncing around too long. That's a live ball, eligible to be recovered by the kicking team. But um, unfortunately, he didn't have much to work with when he did pick it up. Good news, finally got this back in order. The stats are live again, Daniel? Yep, finally okay. got them back. So right. I can tell you, Westboro, They've got 14 rushes for 52 yards in this contest. The Raiders on three rushes for seven, most of which coming on that run by Luke Bolak. That was on third down. Bolak will remain the quarterback, and Devani Deli on the one in the backfield with one receiver split out on either side, couple tight ends. Delion with the carry on first down. Trying to wrestle, stayed on his feet there. Got a few extra yards, twice he Twice the Rangers made contact with him. Thought they'd had him taken down. Not so, said red number five. Yeah, Delion really stayed with that play beautifully. After that first hit, I thought he was down as well. That's the end of the first quarter. So you see the first one, the second one, and you could even see a grasping of the face mask trying to pull him down there. Yeah. I don't think I saw any laundry come out for that. That may be one that our uh, FATV cameras were able to catch, but the officials were not. But a great, great run by Deleon and Dan, we have reached the end of the first quarter. We have indeed. We've seen mostly Westboro with the football, and they've looked solid with it, just methodically making their way downfield. Meanwhile, Fitchburg trying to answer on their second drive of the contest, but at one quarter time, it's Fitchburg nothing and Westboro seven. See a little bit of the cheerleaders at his homecoming. Solid crowd coming out tonight at historic Crocker Field. So do you have any other Crocker trivia for me? Last week you mentioned that Babe Ruth made a, uh, uh, an historic visit here to Crocker Field and had very complimentary things to say, as Mr. Ruth, I imagine, often did. Give me another tidbit, if you could, Daniel, about Crocker Field history. That it's on the National Register of Historic Places. Really? If it has been for a little over 20 years, it is very much a historic field. So when we say it's historic Crocker Field, that's not just hyperbole, it really is historic. We, we, we strive to stay away from hyperbole here on our FATV broadcast, if I'm not mistaken. We try our best. All right, so the teams have reset. We're gonna get the second quarter here going, Daniel. Fitchburg Red Raiders on offense, setting up about a second and two after that DeLeon run to end the first quarter. Bolak gonna keep it himself, running to the near side. And, and takes a couple different Rangers to take him down, but not before he gets to about the 35-yard line for a first down. Great run by Bolak. Unfortunately, there is an injured Westboro Ranger, and what happened there is he ended up getting the worst of a hit by his own teammate. You'll see it here on the replay. They were both trying to make the tackle on Bolak, and unfortunately, uh, one of his teammates just missed Bolak and really um, put a put a pretty big hit on the uh, on the Ranger defender there. There's also a Red Raider down on the other side of the field right now as well. So the training staff's out for both sides trying to deal with this. And you can see the collision right there. Yeah. It's just two Rangers coming together and colliding. I can tell you that it is Luke Hadley, a junior captain for Westboro, who was the injured Ranger. He is up and running off the field under his own power, appearing to be okay. Right now the concern appears to be more for the Injured Red Raider. I don't have a number on that individual, Dan. It looks like it's, uh, it's a number in the 50s. And we're told that it is, uh, that's not helpful. Sorry. <laughs> I looked at my roster and I don't have number 53 on there. The good news here, despite the fact that not being on our roster, um, he is coming off the field, appears to be a little bit limping for sure, but uh, under his own power is coming off the field. So hopefully both of those players are all okay. Uh, football can be a, uh, a rather violent game, Daniel. Yep, it can be. We've been told that the Raiders have been playing a little bit of uniform roulette as the season has gone on. Well, we always appreciate that up here in the press box. <laughs> Means a lot of Raymond Luxury Yatched appearances, or Ed Reynolds appearances, if you're familiar with John Grigory Shtick. As on the far side, Bolak found some room on the far side. He's trying to break away. He's being held up by one Ranger, and it takes about four or five more to take him to the ground. Great there, great gain there by Luke Bolak. You're gonna see on the replay, he really sold the misdirection. There is a late flag that just came in, 
uh, something was perhaps said or done. We do have some Red Raiders cheering, so one wonders if there was some frustration on the side of Westboro. I can tell you if it stands for Fitchburg, it's a 24-yard gain. We'll see if it's plus or minus anything. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 58 of the white. 15-yard penalty and a first down for Fitchburg. This is the first penalty towards ejection. Watch this um, misdirection from Bolak. Really sells the idea that that play's going right. By the time he starts running left, there's really not much out there to stop him, and he gets the big gain on the play. Indeed, and unsportsmanlike conduct is called against Westboro, which will add another 15 yards to it. So net gain, uh, 39 yards for the Raiders, and they have it on the Westboro 27-yard line. They are in business. High snap, Doharian Wells takes it on the end around, making his way to the near side. Doharian Wells taken down right at the goal line. He is in. Touchdown, Red Raiders. Great run there by Wells. There is another flag, though. Yeah, I think I saw During a flag come in fairly Holden. late. Holden, oh. offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. For the third time this year, Doharian Wells has had a touchdown call back on a penalty. That was unfortunate. Beautiful play. I don't know that the hold necessarily made an enormous difference in what that play was. That was all Doharian Wells and using his athletic talent to get to the end zone. So the hold against the Raiders will knock it back to the 38-yard line. Looks like they're going to assess 11 yards on that. So they say the hold happened at the very beginning of the run, basically. There's a Ranger jumping, and I think the Raiders are going to get five of those back. Before the snap, offside, defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. You could hear a bit of inflection there in the referee's voice. Um, <laughs> perhaps noting that there have been an inordinate number of flags thus far in this contest. So all's told after that, we are at uh, 70 penalty yards. 70, okay. 35 for each team. It is evenly distributed. Well, you like when that happens, Daniel. You don't like to see one team you know, penalized in a lopsided way, certainly. Yep. Nice and balanced thus far. Harvey Early goes in motion to the near side. On first down, 16 to go. It's a botched handoff. And jumping on top of it will be Devani Deleon. But that's going to march him back a little bit to the 35-yard line. That play appeared to be trouble from the start. Yet another high snap. That has not been the first one of those this game. And it just slowed down the play setting up there. Bolak had difficulty getting the ball down in time to hand off to, uh, to his running back. Loss of two yards. Second down, 18 to go. Need to get to the 18-yard line for a first down, if I'm doing math correctly. Bolak is going to keep it himself on the high snap. Shakes off a few different Rangers. He's still going on his feet. And again, it takes several Rangers to bring him to the ground. He's down around the 22-yard line. I keep panning the field to see if there's any more laundry on there. Not this time. <laughs> We've sort of gotten used to uh, not seeing our calls with too much authority because a lot of them are coming back. Hey, Luke Bolock, instant office, offense Excuse me, tonight, uh, really is, is, is running uh, some outstanding plays here. And, and he is definitely not going down at first contact. He's able to extend those plays well into the secondary on numerous occasions. They've had to work for it. And... All's told, it's a, he's got four carries for 57 yards tonight. Third down, five to go. End around, Wells is going to try it again. And again, we're going to see, well, he's got a first down. He's pushed out of bounds. I'm again looking for flags. There is a flag. That's going to be a late hit, Daniel. He was well out of bounds by the time that last tackler came in. So they're going to add on quite a bit of yardage here as well. Probably half the distance, I would guess. Well, it seems like every time he has a good run, a flag comes out, but maybe this time it's for something the opposition did. Yeah, the run might count this time. After the play, personal foul, late hit on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, it gave him to the 10 yard line on that run. So it was a good time run. Out Westboro. And now Westboro is going to call time with 9.07 to go in the second quarter of play. 
Got to be encouraged, Daniel, if you're a Fitchburg Red Raider fan. And I know we're being balanced in our broadcast tonight, but I'm going to make the bold assumption that there are probably more Red Raider fans watching this broadcast this evening. But that is a really encouraging set of plays there that this Red Raider offense has, uh, has demonstrated on their second possession this evening. They're looking much more solid on this drive. And with the with that late hit out of bounds, you know, first down and goal to go with just five yards to go. That'll definitely help matters a little bit. That puts Westboro ahead now in the penalty yardage category. Yep, that'll sneak them ahead. They don't get to mark off all 15 that time, just five, because that's all half the distance was. You see the great shot there of the church. As always, beautiful work by the FATV camera operators. You get beautiful sight lines here from historic Crocker Field. It's one of the greatest high school football venues in the state. That's, that's Academy Middle School. I'm looking at a different, I'm thinking about a different part of the, no, Long Joe Middle School. It was Academy when I went there. Deleon keeping it himself on first and goal in the Raider row line trying to form the ball to get a couple more yards. Yeah, not much there on that particular play, but you know, you can't run Luke Bolak every play. So maybe they're setting up uh, the idea that they're gonna run some plays directly into the line and then maybe open it up to the outside a little bit. Looks like he got about one yard on that one. Daniel, there's a flag on the play. It's the most incredible thing <laughs> that has just happened. Before the snap, offside, defense. Half the distance, still second down. It's also against Westboro for offsides. The most incredible thing is a reference to our, our Fitchburg State coverage, but we can still use that here. So second and goal from about the two yard line now. Yeah, not the most expensive penalty in the history of football, but a penalty nonetheless. Well, we Raiders trying to set up the formation, it looks like Couple players don't quite know where to go. Yeah, that, that formation was illegal there, Dan. There's a there's a flag on the play. There were way too many men in the backfield and not enough on the line. Yeah, that's the problem when you don't really know where to go because you don't know who's supposed to be on the line, and who's not. Before the snap, illegal procedure on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. But that one is not going to be half the distance or well if it was half the distance backwards that would be awful you know it hardly seems fair though because on the prior play or the one before it a, a similar sort of minor penalty only well, resulted in a yard being walked yard. off against Westboro but now Fitchburg gets walked off five just because they're close to the opponent's end zone it's yeah, one it of those things I don't really understand about football it's one of those strange curiosities of it but now they've had the time to get lined up properly from the seven yard line, Bolak throws, and he finds Harvey Early for a touchdown. There you go, touchdown Red Raiders. That one was set up beautifully. I'm not sure the last time I saw a receiver quite so wide open in the end zone. Beautiful play to set up that play, uh, uh, beautiful fake rather, to set up that play by Bolak to spring the receiver to be wide open in the end zone. Nice job there by the Red Raider offense. It's their first touchdown in nearly three full games. The jump pass from Luke Bolak, and as you can see, Harvey Early was wide focused open. Pulls that one in. Now Shea Gonyor for the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up. It's dramatic, and it's no good. Wide to the right. Yeah, the defense there was able to get into that backfield pretty quickly. I'm a little surprised that kick wasn't blocked. Got it off, but with dramatics, and it didn't work out for the Red Raiders, and so they still trail with 7.45 to go in the first half of play. It's Westboro 7 and Fitchburg 6. I'm just watching the replay now, man, of this uh, extra point attempt. There were a lot of bodies on the ground at the end, too, and I half thought we might saw yet, see yet another penalty, perhaps for roughing. No, okay, so the kicker was able to stay on his feet. Everyone else was uh, sort of obliterated on that play. But good to see the Red Raider offense put one in the end zone there. And it was a great passing play, again, set up by the nice fake by, uh, by Luke Bolak. Eight plays for 85 yards in four minutes and 42 seconds was that drive as the Raiders get their first points in about three weeks' time. Another curiosity statistically for the Raiders is they've yet to score in the second half this season. 
in all, any game in the second half. Yeah, all of their points have come in the first 24 minutes of football. Very interesting. And Daniel, I'm going to make a bold prediction. That streak ends tonight. These Red Raiders will put up at least several points in the second half of tonight's homecoming game. I'll be rooting for that one for sure. As it turns out, the Raiders don't even have the worst offense in Central Mass. Their Week 8 opponent, Doherty, has only scored 19 points this season through five games. The Highlanders having a very tough time of it this year. It's an extreme rebuild. In fact, I believe they're playing south this weekend, trying to beat and the Highlander trying to keep a 22-game winning streak alive as Bramley's able to bring it back to about the 34-yard line, a good return. Looks like there was a little bit of confusion on who wanted to take that ball. There was a bit of confusion there. It looked like one of the upbacks might indeed take it. They chose not to. Um, Bramley ended up taking it and getting a decent return. Found himself some blockers. Indeed, almost looked like an old-style wedge set up in front of him. My dad used to tell me the flying wedge was illegal, Daniel. You know football better than I do. Is the flying wedge illegal on returns? It's still supposed to be, but I'll admit I've never actually... I don't actually know what it looks like because it, you never see it. Maybe if I look on YouTube at some point, we'll see it somewhere. Bramley with the run on first down, just wrapped up right at the line. Ali Cahill, I believe, had the bear hug there, the sophomore linebacker. Tell you what, this uh, Red Raider defense is getting great pursuit on these ball carriers. Uh, at some point, you would think that Westboro might have to put it in the air because Fitchburg is, is uh, loaded up for, um, for runs every time, and they're able to really get some good pursuit going. Thus far, it's been 15 rushes for the Rangers, and as we mentioned, Marco Micucci does not have any pass attempts this season because he is a wide receiver by trade. Second down, nine to go. It's another yeah. handoff, and Bramley wrapped up immediately by Antonio Santiago. And again, I'm going to go back to it, Daniel. If they can't sell the idea that they're going to do anything besides off-tackle runs here, Fitchburg is well prepared for each of these. Guys are coming off those blocks and, and able to get in the backfield, either for minimal gains or for, in this case, another small loss. Very generous spot, I felt, because it looked I like they, so too. Looked like they wrapped up 32-33. They give them nose on the 35. Yeah, that's a, that was a curious spot. Third down and 10 to go for the Rangers, approaching halfway in this second quarter of play. Westboro holds a 7-6 lead. Another pitch out. See if they can give Bramley more time. Nope. Santiago again has read that well. There's a story developing here, Daniel. It does not appear that Westboro is inclined to throw many or any passes tonight, and that obviously gives a pretty substantial advantage to the defense if you know that the, uh, the other team's going to run the ball every time. A loss of three that time. The punt released and not a solid one as it will bounce around the Raider 48-yard line. That one coming off the foot of Colin Barr. Another nice opportunity here for the Fitchburg uh, Red Raider offense. I didn't hear anyone yell poison on that uh, pump, though, Daniel. Do they not yell poison? It's a good idea. I like when they yell poison. But that time, Westboro, uh, they don't have any problem with just downing the football. Raiders will have solid field position. The Westboro punting game hasn't been very good, it seems. That's one of those things they definitely need to improve on, is finding someone with a solid leg who will be able to get it down there. I think for purposes of this evening, they need to at least sell the idea that they might throw a pass. I also noticed on my stats going in, Bramley did not have a recorded run coming into tonight. But that didn't stop... Uh, that didn't stop uh, Marlboro last, seat, last week. A good run by Luke Bolak, this time going out to the near side, taken down by Sebastian Grillo at the Ranger 45-yard line. Again, some nice running by Bolak. A lot of these Bolak runs have been, you know, five-yard gains, but he ends up running about 35 yards. They've been uh, uh, very wide runs in a lot of cases. He's broken a lot of tackles. Very impressive uh, display. Uh, from uh, from Luke Bolak tonight. Nice job. The junior quarterback making things happen on the ground. A solid weapon there as Delion tries the run up the middle. Delion not finding the success there. He gets back to the line and that's about it. They've actually lost a yard all told. Put him at the 46. Bo 
Wax got five carries for 64 yards. DeLeon now five carries for five yards. Daniel, I don't know if it's relevant to point out or not, but there is some interesting warm-up activity this side on the Fitchburg Red Raiders sideline. Could be ready to try that strategy we're alluding to. Like I said, I don't want to give it away just yet. Third down and four to go. Black throws right side. That's going to be caught by Nardi at the 40-yard line, shaking out of a tackle. Takes two to take him down. Not before the first down around the 37-yard line. More solid offense from the Fitchburg Red Raiders. One of the nice things is we have not seen a penalty flag on this possession yet, though I may have just jinxed it, I realize. That's something that I know Gooks would be right on me if I said <laughs> that. <laughs> I, well, Gooks is going to get on you for all sorts of things, but... <laughs> No, I, I agree with you on that one. It's been clean thus far. 3.45 to go in the first half. Raiders down by a point. After the first down from Nardi. Lee Wells on the end of well. Oh, gets out to the far flank and found some room. This time they don't hit him after he goes out of bounds. And he gets a good chunk of yardage, double digit yards. About 13 and a first. Boy, nice rush there. That looked like it could have been disaster in the backfield you see uh, on the replay here. He was basically stopped in his tracks. To their credit, the O-line hung in there on their blocks and w uh, was able to free up uh, Wells there to be able to get that nice gain on the left side. They've run that play a few times, getting to Harry and Wells out to the flanks, and it's worked pretty well. Two of those counted. <laughs> One of those he found in the end zone, but yeah, they haven't been able to tackle him on those. Mm -hmm. All three of those ended with him going past the line. Throw out to the far side is caught by Medina, and he's able to shake off a couple of tackles. Medina making his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Red Raiders! We hadn't seen him in a little while. Joshua Medina shows up for instant dividends, and the Raiders lead. But one of the things you like is how Fitchburg on offense is mixing up the plays. They're, uh, they're running Bolak, they're running other running backs, and, and they're running a variety of passing plays to really free up the outside as well. Nice job of the Fitchburg Red Raider offense thus far tonight. We didn't see Medina last week, and that was, I think, the first time I saw red number three on the field. He shows up and immediately the Raiders are able to cash in. It's going to be a fake Wells. May have had a bit of trouble with the snap, but it's... Wells against three Rangers, and they bring a stop to that one, and it'll stay 12-7. That conversion may have been doomed from the start. It looked like the kicker himself was late to get on the field for the play, and uh, it was a little bit rushed out there, and I, I, I just don't think that play came together as quickly as it could. Doesn't make too much of a difference yet, at least, Daniel, because these Red Raiders have a lead. They have the lead for the first time in a little while. I believe they led a little bit in that Shepherd Hill contest. You know what the cool kids say now, Daniel? You know, I work at a college with cool kids. Mm -hmm. They say they've had the lead for the first time in a hot second. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I've heard some say, you know, it's been a minute since it's they've been had a minute? the lead, but it's been many minutes. <laughs> Doesn't really work in a football context, I don't think. There's the chicken. Chicken's very excited, as are the Fitchburg Red Raider cheerleaders. And again, a nice crowd here at Crocker tonight for the homecoming game. Haven't heard Mr. Touchdown in a while, and it's good to see and good to hear Mr. Touchdown. 200 ticks of the clock remain in the first half of play. The Raiders lead 12 to 7. Thinking about you know, Monty Tech, their 4 and 1 this year, and what they've done on extra points is simple. They don't. Two point conversions all the way. Every time. At this point, with as much discombobulation as we've seen, they may need to consider that. That's in to touch. Out at the 30-yard line, Westboro has options. So the options are make them re-kick from five yards back, take it at the spot plus five yards, or take it 25 yards from the spot. I think they might take it plus five yards. So that rule's a little bit different from college then. Yep, 25 yards instead of 30 there, but mm. uh, well actually, so the 35, the 35, or... During the kick, illegal procedure on the kicking team. Offense have chosen to start at the 35-yard line. First down, Westboro. Yeah, I realize 30, and it's like, take, take it where it goes by five yards and take it at the 35. It's the same line, so yeah. So they will kick it, so it goes out of bounds, and 
they will have it at the 35. Three twenty to go again in the first half of play. And what's Westboro going to do on first down? It's going to be another run. All told, it was a keeper by the quarterback, Marco Micucci. Looks like J.J. Casillas was able to get that tackle. I was a little concerned about maybe a horse collar there. He did seem to grab him kind of high. Not sure what happened there. There looked like to, to be a bit of confusion on the, uh, on the Westboro offensive side of the ball. Marcucci, or Micucci, excuse me, may not have had the option that he wanted with that handoff and just uh, ended up having to keep it himself. So two-yard gain for the deputy quarterback, essentially, in Marco Micucci. Second down, he rolls to the right side, flips it out, and not getting a whole lot was Hunter Bramley. No. Admire the, um, the change up there. Again, it appears they are reticent to put the ball in the air, but at least it was a pitch outside there to keep the Fitchburg defense on their toes. They just, they've shown no comfort to throw the football. As we saw last week, Marlboro only attempted one pass. They only really needed to attempt one pass. This time, yeah, Westboro has not even pretended to act like they want to throw the football. They put mm -hmm. one receiver out on the far side just to try to make the Raiders respect that a little bit, but they have been run all the way. 19 carries for 52 yards go Westboro in this contest. Under two minutes to go now, and Micucci just stuck at the 35, doesn't know where to go, and he's wrapped up by Deleon and Cohill. You have to imagine the Red Raider coaching staff is very much on to the idea that, uh, that Westboro is not intending to pass very much tonight. Um, I don't know exactly what you tell your guys because I'm no football expert, Daniel, but I, I think you tell your guys, load up the box, it's going to be a running play, and, and come off those blocks and see if you can make a tackle. Punting unit on for Westboro now. Colin Barr trying to get a solid one off. It's his best punt thus far. And I believe that punt hit a Westboro player in the back of his head, Daniel. I believe Logan Maine, uh, unbeknownst to him because he was looking downfield, was able to uh, down that punt off of his helmet. Interesting how that's worked out. But down at the 39-yard line on the boink. Yep. And 72 seconds for the Raiders to work with to try to pad the lead. They do have one timeout. But they've definitely looked a lot more comfortable in moving the football downfield. 13 rushes for 93 yards. Westboro now on 20 rushes for 49 yards. Raiders are also 3 of 4 in the air. And we have whistles. And a flag. Hmm. Haven't seen a little bit of laundry in a while. We were overdue. Before the snap. Legal procedure on the offense, five yard penalty, still first down. So procedure knocks him back to the 34 yard line. We're just under 100 penalty yards between the two teams. We have seven for 50 against Fitchburg, six for 42 against Marlboro. Oh, so Fitchburg has gotten ahead again in the penalties? Yeah, the uh, kickoff out of bounds and that one oh, pushed yes. him back ahead. Yes, indeed. Had a knock at five off for that one. First down, 15 to go. Bolak rolling to the left, maybe thinking about passing. He will pass. He finds a target on the far side. That Medina again. It was Medina until he stepped out of bounds, but he got a good gain on that one. I'm trying to see where the official is spotting it. The official appears to be spotting it right near the line to gain for the first down yard. And so a pickup of about 10 for Medina. Plus the penalty, actually 15. and. They're saying, should we oh. send them going? We should send them going. Send the chain gang for a first down. I had forgotten about the penalty, Daniel. Thank you. Gave him the first down. You can see Medina was stripped well after he went out of bounds. And he's like, what's that for? I had the, there was a whistle there. Red Raider offense now under a minute in the second quarter here, Daniel. You see the 10 seconds on your screen indicating we're under a minute to go. 51 yards from goal are the Raiders. Bolak probably wants to throw. He does throw, incomplete. 
short for Nardi, but I think he was more trying to get that ball in the vicinity of Nardi as opposed to just wanting to stop the clock and not wanting to take a sack. Yeah, and I think the last thing you want to do here if you're Fitchburg is to have a miscue that results in giving the ball back before the second quarter ends. So I think there's a decision to be made here by the Red Raider coaching staff with 37 seconds left. How much do you realistically think you can put the ball in the end zone versus the risk of perhaps giving the ball to the um, to the defense and, and, and leaving the second quarter not with a lead, but potentially a deficit? Of course, for Westboro, their one touchdown drive, they only had to go 16 yards to get those points. Second down, 10 to go, another high snap. Bolak blows a tire, but is able to stay on his feet and get a pass off. Does Doherty and Wells make that catch? Yes, he does! Wow, a beautiful one-handed catch by Wells on that. Uh, that play looked to be problematic when Luke Bolak slipped on the wet turf. Appears that we are gonna have... I think the Raiders have to call their final timeout. Yeah, I think you're right. Timeout, Fitchburg, that's their final timeout. But yeah, because that he ended up falling just short of the boundary. Look at that, getting his hand down, staying on his feet. Yeah. Otherwise, the elbow doesn't go down, the no, knees don't no go down, right and look at this extension by Doherty and Wells. Wow, some great athleticism tonight from some of these Fitchburg High School uh, Red Raider players. Really impressive display. Oh, that was just an incredible catch. Everything going wrong until suddenly it's not going wrong anymore. Do you have a regular so looking at the stats, again, 156 yards of offense for the Raiders, 49 for Westboro. In terms of passing, Luke Bolak now five for six for 63 yards. Outstanding. Safe to assume that this has been one of the more productive offensive displays for Fitchburg this year? It's one of their better halves, I can say that. I mean, maybe not so much in points. All the 19 points against Shepherd Hill came in the first half, but it's been a solid. And let's look at that angle there again. You can see Wells just stretching out he needed all of his body all of his reach to pull that ball in and make the catch third down three to go wells he's thinking about throwing dazzle. and so he's gonna throw deep does he have medina yes he does to arian wells to joshua medina touchdown red raiders Wow, some exciting football tonight here at Crocker Field. <laughs> Guys are going a little crazy, tripping over themselves, but that was a play to remember, Daniel. So Doherty and Wells isn't allowed to run into the end zone, but he can uh, throw a ball to a guy who can run it into the end zone. There are no flags on this one. The Raiders lead 18 to seven. Let's look at this again. Great time for this play, a well-constructed play. You can see at this point that uh, that Wells very much wants to throw. He's got a wide open man. Wasn't a done deal though upon the catch. Still had to uh, sneak by, break that tackle for the touchdown. Exciting Raider football to be watching tonight. That was incredible. Raiders are gonna go for two after the two botched extra points. It's gonna be Deleon trying to drive up the middle. He's in. You can put it on the board, yes! 20 to seven. Steal Hawk Harrelson's line for a moment. Well, the, the crowd is into it here at Crocker Field tonight. I think they've been hungry to, uh, to see this sort of offensive firepower from their Raiders. They're certainly getting it tonight. Those last few possessions have been outstanding. Well, at least we've seen historic Crocker Field tonight. That is very much the best half the Raiders have had. 20 on the board. And we're wondering, could they get downfield that quickly in the last seconds? Doherian Wells, his first pass attempt as a Red Raider, finds six points. I'm enjoying the excitement of the cheerleaders and the, uh, the band on the sideline here. They are uh, clearly into the action tonight. It's great to see. In the late stages of this first half, Everything's coming up Millhouse for the Red Raiders. Oh, there you go. And they lead 20 to seven. So you're not gonna get your classic rock lyrical references in tonight, but Simpsons is okay? We'll work on it in the second half. Excellent, I look forward to it. Boots it on the ground, picked up at the 30 yard line by one of the up men for the Rangers. 
and muscled forward to about the 44 yard line and just enough time runs off the clock that Westbro's not gonna have a chance to run another play. That's gonna bring us into the half. The Raiders lead 20 to seven. Well, an exciting first half here, Daniel, at, uh, at Crocker Field, and nice to see the Fitchburg Red Raiders um, really putting together what have been um, several weeks of arguably frustration, but, but, but quality play, and tonight it's really starting to pay off with some real offensive firepower and a lot of fun. They're having a chance to really run the plays that they want to run, and in some cases run plays that no one could have expected them to run. <laughs> yeah, that razzle-dazzle at the end of the second quarter was, was pretty great. You don't see, you know, we saw Johnny L. Silvestri try the uh, fake punt and try to pass downfield. That didn't work out for the Raiders, but credit to Greg Graham, he was willing to go back to the well, mm -hmm. both literally and figuratively, Doharian Wells. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice, Daniel. Yep, to who try another unconventional pass play and Doharian Wells able to throw it downfield, find the top receiver for the Raiders in Josh Medina. He's got, he's doubled his touchdown total in the season, came in with two, he's got two tonight. And the Raiders, after conceding the first score, 20 in a row on the bounce in the second quarter, and they lead 20 to seven. Any other thoughts on the first half? Well, like I said earlier, Daniel, it was great to see the Red Raiders finally put together some quality offensive series. Still a lot of flags on, on both sides, and, and you don't like to see that, some, some messy play. But, uh, yeah, the Red Raiders are playing with some passion, which is great to see. Uh, they're getting some execution on both sides of the ball. Uh, for me, part of the story is that Westboro may not throw a pass this game, and I think the Red Raiders really gain a, a significant advantage there if you know your opponent is unlikely to throw a pass. Yep, if you don't have to respect the pass. You can just commit hard to the run, and yeah. it's up to Westboro to try to challenge them in that regard, and Agreed. we'll see what they can do. But Agreed. I think at this point we're going to take the halftime break. It's homecoming here at historic Crocker Field. It's the Red Raiders of Fitchburg 20, the Rangers of Westboro 7. This is Red Raider High School Football on FATV. Sophomore class princess, Levea Hurley. <laughs> Representing the class of 2024, junior class prince, Benson Cifuentes. And the junior class princess, Zoe Graham. And now, representing the senior class of 2023, homecoming king, Marcus Kelly. And this year's homecoming queen, class of 2023, Deanna Bailey. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our 2022 Fitchburg High School homecoming court. Photo shoot here. Congratulations. At this time, we'd like to recognize this year's cheerleaders, starting with their captain, Amaya McCall. Next, Leia Diaz. Next up, 
Americus Rivera. And Gabriel Pierce. Also, Kayla Walsh. And Janessa Mills. Also, Kaylee's Santiago. Jesse Sanchez. Vanessa Higgins. And last but not least, Sila Morris. Congratulations, ladies. Now I would like to recognize our senior band members before we do our halftime show. Drum majors Deanna Bailey and Isabella Leota. Patrick Cosgrove. Asher Gaudette. Ethan Lorette. Alexander Leach. Naima Scott Johnson. Maya Stevenson Zakelli. And Karma Young. Congratulations to our senior band members. And now for our halftime show.
Thank you, Fitchburg High School Band. That was fantastic. Gets better every week. Getting ready for the start of the second half here at Historic Crocker Field on Homecoming. And it's been quite a great atmosphere here, at, here in the heart of Fitchburg and things are going well for the Red Raiders as well. They lead for the first time at halftime this season, 20 to seven. Daniel Bolak, Dr. Robert Hines here with us. Just catching my breath a little bit. That spiral staircase can really get you, Daniel. Yeah, took a little longer than I thought, but <laughs> I was just going around, having a look at the out of town scoreboard. Grafton Division Four beat Shrewsbury Division One side, 13 to 12, that game just went final. Great matchup between two solid sides in Central Mass. I had the opportunity to uh, go down the sidelines during halftime, Daniel. A lot of uh, exciting things going on for homecoming. I saw the cheerleaders do a little Shania Twain routine, and then, of course, the Fitchburg Marching Band was out there doing what appeared to be a number of selections from various spy movies. If my, uh, if, my if I know my spy movies, that seems to be what they uh, what they were doing. It was pretty cool. Oh yes, and. Seeing that Monty Tech's having a great run of it thus far themselves as they find themselves up by a score of 40 to 18. They're late in the fourth quarter right now on their way to a five and one record. Blackstone Valley Tech dismantling Northbridge 30 to seven. BBT, you know, their first three games, they didn't score any points. They're sick of being on the losing end. They've changed things up now. <laughs> Just about to get second half action here started, Daniel. Uh, and and the good news for Red Raider fans is they are receiving the second half kickoff. Makes things makes things a little bit easier. Westboro had a great long drive on their first possession. It's just a short kick right to the far side, hauled in at the 31-yard line. 
by Edwin Reyes. He'll just go straight to the ground with it, full protect. Not going to take any gambles. Happy with the field position. So I'm curious to see what the Red Raider offensive alignment will look like. You'd alluded earlier in the broadcast, as had I, that there may be some surprises in store. And certainly we've seen a few surprises with the offensive play calling thus far this evening. Yes, the but surprises we've seen were not what we were foreshadowing and no. alluding to. They might be holding not. that one back. They you may. Know, they may hold that one back for another week. They're happy with how it's going right now, I yeah, think. Yeah, and why change things if it's working? Luke Bolak back at quarterback for the Raiders. First down up the middle, Devani Delion. He's been great on the defensive side of the ball for the Red Raiders. Offensively, the runs up the middle just have not been working. Yeah, it looks like maybe a short pick up there on that play, Dan. Defensive line was up to the task on that particular play. So a short gain for DeLeon on first down. Spotted at the 33. Second down, nine to go. Three receivers out there. And whistles will kill the play on another high snap. And that's also been a challenge for the Red Raiders. The snapping has not been consistently where it needs to be. I agree. Pull the snap, false start, offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. Yeah, this is not what the Red Raiders need to see. They had such success in the uh, latter half of that first half, and then it was reasonably penalty free. You hate to see a, uh, a false start penalty to get going on their, uh, on their first possession in the second half. Raiders had themselves 100 penalty yards last week. Fortunately, between the two teams, they're still under 100, but the next penalty will definitely put them over. It's 55 for the Raiders, 42 for the Rangers. But you know, Peabody beat Lemonster last week and they took over 160 yards in penalties. So it's wow. not like you can't get it done without being disciplined. The catch is made by Doherty and Wells on the near side flat. On the 35, shook off a tackle, 40, 45, still going. Finally, run out of bounds at midfield. I tell you what, Doherty and Wells continues to impress tonight. Uh, there was some misdirection plays, a little juking in the backfield set up. Uh, a, a part of that gain, and then just pure athleticism down the left side. Well, that'll undo the penalties. Get 22 yards on that run. <laughs> I'm looking at six for the defense there. Uh, Hunter Brantley kind of got kind of got beat by Wells there. Just some great moves there. Yep. By the senior receiver Doherty and Wells. He's been in the thick of it tonight. The 50 yard line, Bolak on the option, kept it himself, throws out right side. Harvey Early's got it at the 40, and he's starting to break free. There is a flag on the play as he's taken down around the 20, and you could hear the applause. It was like the flag shut the applause machine off. <laughs> Immediately. We're going to see this one come back. They may keep some of this yardage, but I imagine there was an illegal block at some point downfield. During the run, Holden on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, replay first down. So I saw it fly through the air well after Early had caught it. And so we're going to see how much of it gets marked back. I think, uh, I think we're just going to leave it there. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So, Again, creative play calling tonight by the Red Raider offense. A nice balance of, of running plays and passing plays, some real creativity that is serving this Red Raider offense quite well thus far this evening. So it's a 10-yard penalty, all is told. Another high snap and another flag on this play, Daniel. So after what was first and 10. Before the snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. The line work needs to improve. And that's marched them back into their own territory. The official now marching that five yards off. See if the camera replay is going to pick up the false start. Boy, tough to see there. Yeah, I didn't quite see it myself, yeah, but. I didn't catch it. I trust the official saw something to throw that flag, but I, I had trouble seeing it on the replay. Solid snap, throw over the head of Wells that time. A little bit of a wobbler. Didn't have the accuracy they were looking for. And a late flag, Daniel. Well, that's not what you want to see. This one would seem to be largely unrelated to the action. Um, something may have happened between gentlemen on the offensive and the defensive line. Perhaps some words were exchanged. 
hilariously just against Westbrook. Personal foul. Do everything. Unnecessary roughness on the offense. Number 71, 15 yard penalty. Replay first down. Not what you want to see for the Red Raider offense. They are most certainly moving backwards now. Yep, Ephraim Ganefo called for that, and that marches all out. They'll double the jeopardy, if you will. And they'll put it on the 30 yard line. I don't know why it's on the 32. That's only 13 yards, but whatever. <laughs> and. Uh, Apparently the down didn't get marked off either, so it's a first in uh, that much. <laughs> first in some distance. It's a lot. Polak keeps it himself, trying on the option, and he gets back to the line, if anything. It's like they're peeling off the tacklers. The main tackler for Westboro, I think, is the last to get off the ground. Yeah. Still trying to get the number there. Maybe 71 for Westboro with the, uh, yes. Joseph Marino? Yes. Yeah, let's give it to him. Anyway, no gain for the Raiders. It's second down. And Gardner, I've also been given an update that Gardner is having a very bad time against Southbridge. But it's better than last week where they had no time against Lunenburg. Mm -hmm. Bullock trying to calm things down on the offensive side. Let's see if he's successful in that regard. Checking with his personnel, moving Sylvester in motion, gets the time to throw near side, and that was hauled in by one of the Raider coaches who was not an eligible receiver, so that will not count for anything. Notably, though, no flag for that ineligible receiver. We will let the Raider coaches make the play on that ball without an additional penalty. They won't get any yardage for it, but they can make the play. So third and awfully long way here for the Red Raider offense. Again, not what we want to see for, for those of you who are Red Raider fans. The second quarter ended with much fanfare and the uh, Fitchburg offense really doing some outstanding job uh, moving the ball. This quarter, at least this first series of this quarter, not so much. They've taken, I think, over 30 yards of penalties on just this drive. They've been their own worst enemy to start this second half of play. Bolak slings sidearm. Gets a hand on it is Doharian Wells, but his athleticism can only take him so far this time. That was a dangerous pass, too. There were multiple defenders there that uh, would, would have been more than happy to, uh, to bring that one in themselves. Ultimately couldn't overcome first and 27. You wonder if Wells isn't able to get a hand on that one. Had, uh, that may have uh, well been a, uh, an interception. He seemed to change the trajectory of the ball, which, which potentially uh, baffled the defense sufficiently to keep that from being an interception. Daniel, there is a flag down. What's the most important Illegal game? substitution on the offense, 12 men on the field. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. Canadian offense is another minus five. And again, the penalty yards, uh, I said they were under 100 you know, between the two teams, and now it's 88 penalty yards for Fitchburg on 12 penalties. It's, uh, that scale is uh, now very lopsided. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So I'll try it again. Johnny L. Silvestri into punt. Gets it off. It's a bit wobbly. It's going to bounce a couple of times. It's going to make its way across midfield and stop at the 48-yard line. And that's where Malachi Marion was able to down that one. So that's where you will see them start with that. And well, the Fitchburg defense is going to get an opportunity here to, uh, to strut their stuff again. If memory serves, we have not seen a single passing attempt from this Westboro offense as yet. Correct. And I'm just looking at the personnel that they've got in place. It appears the personnel should be the same. On first down, a run up the middle, and that's great work by Westboro's wow. offensive line to keep that going. When you thought it was only gonna be one or two yards, it's gonna be eight or nine, it so seems. Yeah, great individual effort there. I'm just trying to track down a number of the, the back there that had that gain. Montalvo, yeah, that was Montalvo. He really grinds there. He's got three or four uh, Red Raiders hanging on him, and he just keeps grinding those legs to push that one uh, probably five yards beyond when the first hit came. Yeah. 
So second down, two to go. And the most incredible thing has happened again. In the preliminary indication, this one's going to advance the snap. Red Raiders. Defense, offsides in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. Result of the penalty, the first down. So first down comes from that. And again, now the indiscipline sneaking back into the Raider game. I was looking at the replay there. I wonder if it was lined up in the neutral zone, perhaps, because I didn't see anyone jump. They may have been lined up there in the neutral zone. Can't be doing that. Got to be a little more responsible. The time it is, Bramley on the far side. Bouncing off a couple of tackles and getting a good chunk of yardage. But there is another penalty flag on the field. During the run, personal foul, face mask on the defense, 15 yard penalty. Result of the call, first down. So even then, they couldn't take down Bramley legally and he'll tack on a bonus 15. I tell you what, the gentleman in the white hat this evening is getting full utilization out of this outstanding sound system that FATV sets up. Uh, as you mentioned last week, one of the few venues in central Massachusetts where the referee is mic'd up. But uh, yeah, making full utilization of that this evening. And now on first down, they'll try to run up the middle again. From the 17 yard line. Offensive line is getting a push. We said that in the first quarter during that first uh, that first possession that they had. That's a large offensive line, and they're definitely getting a push. But again, I, I, I think Westboro is uh, perhaps uh, hamstrung by the idea that I think everyone at Crocker Field knows that they're not going to put the ball in the air. Right now on this drive, they're at least making it work. They've gotten it to the 10 yard line, a seven yard gain by Montalvo on first down. Takes the handoff to the first man. Bramley will take it instead, trying to stay on his feet and get a few more yards. Might be pretty close to the marker for a first. It appears to be. He does get there to the seven. There is a Raider slow to get up. Might be cramps. Yeah, that's DeLeon coming out. Hopping off the field. Yeah, seems to be something with his left leg. You mentioned cramps, maybe. Humidity's been in the air tonight, so. Seems to be doing okay now on the sideline, moving around pretty well. Westboro's got 74 yards of offense tonight, all on the ground. 39 yards from Alex Montalvo, 29 yards from Hunter Bramley, and six yards from Marco Micucci. Gucci, the starting quarterback, as we mentioned. Andrew Pachota, who is normally the starter, I believe, was hurt. And Luke Molesky, we've not seen tonight. Oh, going with Micucci, number nine, a wide receiver by trade. They've not attempted any passes tonight. Not going to attempt to pass here. Don't need to attempt to pass here. When Montalvo can bring it into the end zone, touchdown, Rangers. Looks like about a four yard touchdown rush for. Montalvo, as you said, Dan. Tremendous effort by the uh, by the Westboro offensive line again. They're just getting getting a substantial push. Um, they've got the D line of Fitchburg back on their heels, and they're they're able to move the ball when they uh, when they need to. 5:44 to go in the frame. Not going to go down that easily. Is Westboro? They are also looking for their first victory of the campaign. Arian Batea. In on that one, they're going to fake it, throw it out to the near side, but there is nobody in white there. Yeah, I think I don't think that was a planned fake. I think that was a uh, difficult snap there, and the holder just I, attempted to make the best of it. Well, that was the first pass attempt of the night. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a rather unorthodox way to get it, but indeed, the first pass attempt for the Westboro Rangers this evening comes on a botched extra point conversion. Yep, and uh, nothing good came from that. Oh, uh, it was just the ball was uh, never a ghost of a chance of being able to pull that one. There was just, yeah, I mean, don't know what happened there. Westbro could have used that extra point there. They certainly could have. So it'll be 20 to 13. I'll take a moment to remind you of our underwriters. 
support all of our FATV remote productions, Workers Credit Union, Rural Stone Bank and Trust, UMass Memorial Health, Health Alliance Clinton Hospital, North End Subaru, Unitil, Minuteman Press, and the Sentinel and Enterprise. We thank them for all of their support. So Daniel, maybe one more little tidbit about historic Crocker Field mm -hmm. before we go off the air. You mentioned Babe Ruth has visited and was very complimentary. You mentioned that historic Crocker Field is on the National mm -hmm. Register of Historic Places. Third time's the charm, Dan. Give me, give me a third piece of history that I should know broadcasting from historic Crocker Field. I can tell you that Crocker Field's got their own 501c3 restoration fund, the Crocker Field Restoration Fund, and they could use your help more about that after this play. So Reyes picks that up at the 27 yard line and he's got some space to run as he's past midfield. No flags down that I can see Daniel, that should hold. Edwin Reyes, the up man, brings it into Ranger territory. Boy, we've called Edwin Reyes' name a bunch tonight. He's having a real strong game as well for the Red Raiders. Indeed. You know, they go to the up man there, and I think the last time it went to Reyes, he just jumped right on top of it. But this time he's willing to run it back and got some yardage. Yeah, it was a nice run back there. Knock him down at the Ranger 45-yard line. A couple of great blocks there by the uh, special teams of the Red Raiders to spring him as well. 33-yard kickoff, 28-yard return. Raiders have it with 534 to go in the third quarter. Far side run doesn't go much of anywhere. Devani De Leon got that one. Short gain in play. He's fixed the cramps there, but again, running it into the teeth of the line has just not been working for the Red Raiders. Though the Red Raiders have shown a lot of creativity with their offensive play calling tonight, so that's not the, uh, the only card they've got to play. They've been very, very creative thus far with, uh, with Bolak. So we'll see what they have in mind here. I think try that run just to see. Maybe they're caught off. Maybe they're thinking about something else. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're uh, still on to that one. They know that one. They've got that one dialed in. They're not falling for that one. Bolak with the snap. Now rolling out near side. Needs some time to throw. Shakes oh, off two tackles. Still is able to get that off and finds Wells. Uh, it's actually going to be a loss of yardage. What an exciting loss of yardage, Dan. <laughs> but uh, better than the alternative being sacked for even more than that. Yeah, that was looking to be a 20 or a 25 yard loss if, uh, if Luke Bolak is able to escape some of those tackles. Ends up being a five yard loss, but yeah, it could have been far, far, far worse. Boy, get Bolak credit here though. He's got, uh, he's running against his body. He really, that would have been a tough throw to make. He breaks two potential uh, tacklers uh, to avoid the sack, and he does get a pass away. Just good improv there by the junior quarterback. Quick throw right side, and the diving attempt not able to be hauled in by Nardi. All right, so fourth and I want to say about 14 or so, Dan. There used to be, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 years ago, uh, they would do a commercial break and say, you make the call, and they'd set up the, uh, set up the situation and, and, and invite fans watching at home to make the play call. What's going to be the play call here, Daniel? Fourth and, say, 14. I think it's just a little too much to go forward, and I think this is a good opportunity to pin them deep. Okay. And so they do have the punting unit on there. Johnny L. Silvestri is out to kick it away. We've seen already them fake it once tonight. Maybe not necessarily by design. So it'll come down to the snap. But Silvestri is thinking about faking it. He will throw it, but he's hit as he throws. Hmm. Well, I mean, it was an interesting idea. Fitchburg Red Raiders not afraid to be a little creative with their play calling tonight. That one just uh, did not seem well conceived. Part of the problem was that you had a couple of defenders break through the line immediately, so there was really no time for the punter to even contemplate getting a good throw off. I figure worst case scenario, 49 yard line in Westboro's territory. It's not much worse than some of the other drives tonight. Mm. So you could probably give that up, but nonetheless, it was just a matter of the line couldn't protect Silvestri enough to even get a decent pass off. Mm -hmm. And so Westboro will come back on the field. 3.49 to go. Third quarter, they trail by seven. Handoff there. Montalvo had to shake two 
the left side of the line as it looked like the opening he was looking for wasn't developing as he expected. So he shakes out there, is actually able to find some space on the far side and get it into Raider territory, spot at the 47. That was a pretty nice run by Montalvo, all things considered. Uh, broke away from that initial tackle, broke away from some contact there. Really hard running by the, uh, by the Westboro back. Give him four yards for that one. Maybe five. Looks like they give him the 46 on that. Coming into tonight, if the TNG is up to date at all, correct. Montalvo had 12 carries for 63 yards. Tonight, he has 10 carries for 48 yards. Trusting him in the backfield. This time, it's going to be Nakuchi keeping himself. He found an opening to run through. Great thinking there by the junior quarterback in Marco Nakuchi. Runs it right up the middle for his best run of the night. Perhaps. Design play, I think, there, Daniel. I think that was a quarterback keep the entire way. If you're going to run every play, you've got to be a little bit creative. Um, and certainly there's some creativity there. Great blocking up front by the O-line of Westboro. It's a nine-yard run. Interestingly enough, if my stat sheet is correct, Bobro has not had a double-digit gain on any play tonight. Their longest run is nine yards. Interesting. They've done nine yards a couple of times, but nothing more than that. That's how methodical Joe Beveridge's team has been in this contest. First and 10. Montalvo up the middle, not finding any success. Reyes pulling him back as he's, if he's pulling a rope and tug of war. <laughs> I was watching Joshua Nardi, the defender on that play. Westboro is putting out a single wide receiver on each play, and it's usually Joshua Nardi who is uh, who's set with so <laughs> defending him, and I put that in air quotes. Uh, Nardi is just immediately peeling off the route and going into the uh, center of the field to help with run defense every play now. Because he knows there's just no chance that <laughs> Mikuchi's going to throw it over in that direction. Seemingly, though, I hesitate to say it too loudly because all of a sudden we could be proven very, very wrong. The receiver out there on the far side right now is Colin Barr. And yeah, Nardi is backed up several yards behind there. And now this time, Mikuchi was thinking of throwing and uh, Harvey Early put a stop to that pretty quickly. Boy, that was a classic Bruno Sammartino move there by Harvey Early in the backfield. No? Just blew through the line, I guess. I don't really, yeah. No, All right. I was trying to give you some, some Googerty professional reference, uh, professional wrestling references, and it didn't work out. Would Ivan Putski have been better there? Nope. Oh, Sorry. Okay. All right. Andre the Giant? Better. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get to watch him wrestle. But, yeah, that's the first time we've seen Mikuchi even look like he wanted to throw the football tonight. Yeah, it didn't and work out. Not even a chance. <laughs> I hope that the uh, Westboro O-line didn't think, oh, we can block differently now that we're going to pass. No, you can't. No, you've got to at least uh, try a little better than that. And so it's going to be a pitch out and oh, creation with all day. It's going to be a throw that's going to be incomplete. Nardi fell to the ground as the receiver down there was going forward and Dan Hackett it was Hunter Bramley who tried the throw that time. Yeah, it was very much underthrown and could have been a problem because Nardi actually fell on the wet turf. Uh, wasn't enough to change the outcome of the play, but um, yeah. Interesting, and I applaud uh, Westboro for trying something fresh. Look how much time he had there. There's a penalty on the punt. And before the snap, substitution infraction on the defense. Five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. Uh, another substitution issue against the Raiders. Doesn't change the fact that it's still fourth and a lot to gain for, for Westboro. The yeah, Rangers appear to want to stay with the punt as their uh, choice here. This is a pretty good punt. Definitely their best one of the night. Will that one fall on its way into the end zone? Yes, it will. It'll be a touchback. High school football, where does it come out on a punt touchback, Daniel? 20-yard line. So it's the pros that move to the 25 I think on touchbacks? All the levels to 20-yard lines for punts. Okay. But I think on kickoffs, it's the 25-yard line. In the pros? Yeah. Okay. When it goes to, yeah, kickoffs at pros and college. Okay. 
and kickoffs in the end zone if it should happen in high school. It's still the 20. Yes. I believe that is the case. There is seven seconds to go in the third quarter. So the Raiders will start this drive up by seven. The run up the middle, uh, it's more or less the same. Elion gets a carry up the middle. He gets about a couple of yards, and that's three-quarter time. That's the end of the third quarter. So three-quarters complete at historic Crocker Field, and the Red Raiders continue to hold the lead. It is 20 to 13. So, Daniel, what do you believe is the story of the first three quarters this evening? Well, I can tell you the third quarter, the Raiders in discipline has reared its ugly head yet again. Their penalty yardage, which was so balanced in the first 24 minutes of football, is deeply unbalanced now. It's now 108 penalty, 108 penalty yards against the Red Raiders, 14 penalties committed. Westboro on six for 42. The indiscipline is not helping. It's making things easier for Westboro, and they were able to get a score in that third quarter. Again, the Raiders still have not scored in the second half all season long. And I made a bold prediction to the contrary of that, did I not? Yep, that you predicted that that's going to change. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And what is the punishment exactly if you make a bold prediction during an FHS uh, football broadcast that doesn't come true? Uh, maybe you won't get to come back for the next one. <laughs> But while we have a moment again, uh, the Crocker Field Restoration Fund, you can donate at crockerfield.org, I believe is the URL. I think we've got a lower third for that somewhere. There it is, visit crockerfield.org for more information on the Crocker Field Restoration Committee. And you can help this historic field become even better than it is now. Everything going wrong on this run. Again, Westboro had that well diagnosed on the handoff to DeLeon. It may have been Doherty and Wells Doherian there. and Wells, excuse Heron. me. I did not see the beginning of the play, and it just went all south immediately. Looks like he got back to the line of scrimmage. They tried Doherty and Wells on the end around. But this time, you know, he tried to cut up the middle as opposed to getting to the flank, which has worked out so well for him, and mm -hmm. it didn't happen this time. Mm -hmm. Gets yeah. back, got back to the line of scrimmage, but nothing more than that. So forward progress was given. Third down, eight to go. Raiders tonight on third down is their three for six. And I see more laundry. I think this is defensive, Daniel. I believe this was going to be walked off against the Rangers. Before the snap, offside, defense, five-yard penalty. Third down. Indeed, I could see the official on the near side had his hands on his hips, not looking too pleased on the poor line work. Third down and three to go. And because of the touchback, we know the line to gain is that 30-yard line on the field itself. The teams, let's see, the Raiders have a target to aim for. And Bolak's going to try to take himself, try to follow the line to get there. He does get there, and he's trying to break free. He gets far enough. Get him past the 40-yard line. Outstanding work by Luke Bolak with the legs there. He was able to break through what looked like a sure tackle, potentially for a loss. Just kept grinding those legs, got a little bit of help from that O-line, and was able to break through for that nice first down run. I know my Pepe Edmond, who played a little bit of football back in his day, would say, keep grinding your legs. It's do not stop until they make you stop. <laughs> and Luke Bolak, learning from that lineage, they're only distantly related after all, but trying to find a hole on the far side of the line was Devani DeLeon, but again, they've done well to wrap him up and not much gained on first down. Mm -hmm. But as has been the case thus far this evening, the Red Raider offense seems to set up a typical offensive series with a first down run, almost always off tackle to the middle of the line. And then the creativity comes in, either Bolak with his legs or some creative passing plays. So we'll see if that, uh, that sequence holds again here. Bolak, seven carries, 79 yards. Doherty and Wells, three carries, 25. Devani DeLeon is nine carries for nine yards. Play action throw complete to Johnny L. Silvestri, and he's wrestled down around the 46-yard line. Boy, that play had a lot more promise than the result. Only a pickup of maybe four yards or so, but uh, definitely got the ball out there and had uh, 
had uh, the receiver in space. He's looking. No, no face mask necessarily. Just a good tackle there by, uh, by number 30 on the defense, Sam Whitline. And he was coming in from deep safety position there. Mm -hmm. He had to make a long run to get to that to get to Silvestri, but he was able to make that run and stop Silvestri for just four yards. Third down, Bolak throws left side. Coming back for it. Does he catch do that think? one? Yes. yes, he does. That's what he is awarding that catch. We'll see if the, uh, the FATV truck's able to get us a replay there. Looks to have been a great catch there by Joshua Medina again. Medina's been showing up at these critical moments. It was an underthrown ball. Just able to get his just able to get his hands underneath. Yeah, that'll work. Looks like an injured player for the Rangers. Got 18 on that one. Well, is that 18 or? I saw 18 as well, but I do not have 18 on my roster. So hopefully that uh, young man is all right. He seems to be getting up now. Some sort of leg injury for number 18. Braden Duggan listed as number 18 there. And well, actually, you know, the funny part is I actually was told he wasn't playing tonight. <laughs> Yeah, um, Could have also been a late jersey switcheroo there, mm -hmm. which is probably more likely. But for the young man, we hope he's all right. First down, throw right side. That's going to be caught. And that's going to be Silvestri again to the 25-yard line. Another very strong play there. If you look, Joshua Nardi's block really made that play happen. Sprung him for probably an additional 12 to 15 yards. We'll see if we get that on the replay. Watch this block by Nardi. This play could have uh, been far less successful. Nardi was able to get that block. You just saw it there on the replay um, to really open up quite a bit more yardage. Daniel, my bold prognostication is on the precipice of success. 112 yards on the ground for the Raiders tonight, 165 through the air. Medina's got four for 87, Silvestri now two for 26. Uh -oh. Want to pass again out of the hands of Bolak. Has to pick that up, improvise, and it's probably going to at least make it no gain, maybe even get a yard on that. Keep on running until they make you stop, right Dan? You got it. That's the Bolak way. That's what I'm declaring. And we'll give him a yard on that, so what could have been total disaster ends up just being a one-yard gain, but that's not too terrible considering how all the other first down plays have gone for the Raiders tonight. Agreed. More importantly, the Raiders can try to control the clock here. Now it's 7.15 to go in regulation time. Seven-point lead for Fitchburg, 20 to 13. Yeah, they are slowly making this fourth quarter disappear. I didn't realize they had run that much time off the clock already in this fourth quarter. Oh, oh boy. another bad snap. Bolak's able to pick it up, get a pass off quickly in the direction of Nardi. And again, that pass is just to try to prevent the sack. Yeah, I was going to say, Dan, that was a good choice by Luke Bolak. Clearly was not intending to get that caught by anyone, but was able to keep it far enough away from anyone that it didn't turn into a total disaster there. The snapping here, particularly the long snapping out of the shotgun formation, has been a real challenge for Fitchburg tonight. It has been at times. So Volak is now 12 for 17 for 122 yards. The accuracy that we saw a lot of last year when he was throwing about 60% per completion percentage. This year it's just 40%. But well, we're seeing a lot more of that accuracy tonight. And that's been good to see out of the junior gunslinger in Luke Volak. Delion will line up to the right of Volak on third down. Again, looking to pass, looking for Medina. And that's broken up there. And that is Luke, that's, that's Colin Barr? Or is that Luke Molesky? I had it as number one. That is number one. So that is Molesky. That was real nice uh, defense there by Molesky. He read that route beautifully, able to get a hand in to keep that completion from happening. If it wasn't for that, wasn't for that hand in there reaching in and breaking that up, could have been another touchdown for the Raiders. Fourth down, nine to go. You know they're going to go for it. Olak looks to his sideline, looks for the play. Four receivers. 
Official, the back judge doesn't have his arm up, so still a little bit of time. Now we'll sling it far side, looking for Nardi. He's got him! Touchdown, Red Raiders! Joshua Nardi reads the route perfectly and comes down with it in the end zone, 26 to 13. Well, that was a beautiful passing play again. Uh, Bolak had a, all the faith in the world that the receiver would get to the spot. That looks like a play they've practiced on a number of occasions. And Nardi brings that one in beautifully. The senior receiver had just two catches this season in the, taking out the St. John's game, which again, I ha didn't have a chance to get any stats from. He only had two catches all season coming into tonight. But Nardi, with his biggest catch in a Red Raider uniform, Pulls it in, makes it 26 to 13. Raiders will go for two. Converted on their last attempt. Bolak is going to get this one off, and you can't. There's no defensive two-point conversions in high school football, so that is a no-risk throw. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it falls incomplete. But yeah, so no two-point conversion there, and it stays 26 to 13 in favor of the Raiders. And for the first time this season, they have scored in the second half. Bullock's taking some hits tonight. He's a little bit. He looks a little uncomfortable coming off the field there, Dan. But he's taken a hit on his left hip. Uh, mobility looks fine, but it's been. Uh, he's played extraordinarily well tonight. But he's also. He's had quite a number of hits, including on that play. See the pressure from the Westboro D line starting to get to Bolak, and he's had to scramble so, so much tonight. Yes. That last drive, 11 plays, 80 yards, 5 minutes and 23 seconds. Westboro trails by 13. 6 minutes, 44 seconds in regulation time. So what are coaches telling the Red Raider defense at this point? I think for Westboro, we now know they're a little more willing to go to the air now, and they're going to be even more willing, I have to imagine. But don't sleep on the runs, especially at a number 27 in that backfield there in Alex Montalvo. You, you would think it's now a two-score game. Uh, they, they simply don't have time to get those two scores if they're going to stick to their, uh, their offensive play call and just run, run, run. On the 29-yard line, taken in by Logan Much. And he'll bring it to about the 37. So we'll see if the Rangers have a different offensive alignment as uh, as we're getting late in the game, about halfway through the fourth quarter now, and then being down by two scores. You would think they'd have to open up the offense a little bit more. But uh, again, we don't know what the uh, what the quarterback of the evening necessarily has in terms of uh, in terms of passing ability, and it is the same quarterback in for the Westboro Rangers. So Makuchi is still in under center. And we learned on the last drive that uh, Molesky is fit to play. He is playing. He's just, ball is on the ground as it pops out of the hands of the running back. Able to cover it up, though, it appears, though, Daniel. And if that was Bramley who took that one, lost a handle on it. Interestingly, Westboro did change up the offensive look. They did have a wide and a slot receiver, both to the left side on that last, on that last play. So there is a different look. Uh, potentially, Westboro will feel some urgency now as we get down to 6.06 in the fourth quarter. Again, they're going to put a slot receiver and a wide receiver to the left side. That's right. They've been going one receiver pretty much all night, but now they're opening it up a little bit because they know they have to start gambling with the air. It's a pitch out. Bramley up the middle, but wrapped up by two, three, four, five Raiders. It's half the team now. Ball comes up at the very end, but the whistle had well blown. It's past the 45-yard line. A good gain, though, from Bramley. Six-yard gains, though, Daniel. They're not going to get it done for this Ranger offense. We're now down to five and a half minutes in the fourth quarter. I mean, those are impressive football plays, but they're not, not going to get you what, you what you need if you're looking to get a W out of this game tonight at Crocker Field. Third down, three to go. And Westboro tonight is just one for six on third down. They've got to get it to their own 49-yard line to refresh the downs. Get out of that I formation. Will be a pitch out, Bramley. Right side's gonna get the first down. Taken down to the ground by Stephen Bates. Six on six violence there, but good enough for a first down for the Rangers. Clock still moving now under five minutes in the fourth quarter. 
stretch, a methodical drive isn't going to get it done. It might get you, it might get you seven points. It's probably not going to get you 14 the way they're going. No. Let's see if Westboro can come with a little more urgency. It'll be Bramley again. The line opens up, and it's a good run for Bramley past the 40-yard line. Pretty close to the marker. Yeah, you'd be a little concerned. I, I don't think the Fitchburg defense wants to give up chunks of 8, 9, 10 yards at a time, uh, even if it's on the ground, even if we're now under four and a half minutes in the fourth quarter. That's still concerning. You'd like to see the Fitchburg defense step up as they did earlier and, and, and stop those runs at a much shorter, shorter run. Is nine yards still their longest gain of the night, Daniel? Yeah, it still is. They haven't had any of those double-digit gains. Now we see a whistle. And this one looks to go against Fitchburg. Before the snap, offside, defense, five-yard penalty. Result of the penalty is a first down. So approaching now four minutes in the fourth quarter here at Crocker Field. Fitchburg Red Raiders looking to get Notch their first victory on the season. He's going to need a little bit of a defensive stand here. On first down, Montalvo up the middle. Another solid gain up to the 28. Nice hit, nice tackle there by Joshua Nardi to hold him to just about that five, maybe six yard gain as we now get down to about three and a half in the fourth quarter. Brief stoppage here. Clock is stopped with 3.31. Now they'll wind it. Didn't see what the stoppage might be for. Ball on the 29-yard line. Four-yard carry from Montalvo on the last play. 52 yards on the night. Bramley has 54. Montalvo's averaging just a little more, but again, not a single play of 10 yards or more for the Rangers tonight. That could change on this run. But two, three Raiders to wrap them up. Around the 20 yard line, I think that's another nine. Rusher stayed in bounds. So there's a brief stoppage there that will move the chains, but that clock is moving again, under three minutes. Time continues to tick against the Rangers. They are not getting the yardage fast enough. I think the, Ra the Raiders are playing a little looser on defense because they're trying to respect the pass. They're giving up eight and nine. Another pitch, Bramley to the near side. Deleon and Coheal in on that one. Inside the 15-yard line they go now. It looks like Richard Salomon there as well. Westboro Rangers in that unenviable position that often uh, teams will find themselves in. Having two opponents in the fourth quarter, not only the Red Raider defense, but the clock which is now winding down under two and a half minutes. Pitch out again, Bramley. Found a bit of a hole, shaking off a couple of tackles, spinning out to about the six yard line. Looks like the chains will move again, Daniel. Looks like they'll set up a first and goal for the Ranger offense here. Under two minutes on the clock, however, in the fourth quarter. Time continuing to tick. Some anxious moments here at Crocker Field for the hometown faithful. I think at this point, Westboro's put all their hopes into getting an onside kick recovery. Up the middle, and Reyes able to read that and wrap up Montalvo. There is a flag, and it may well be a hold on the offense, judging from where it came from, but we'll see what the referee has to say about it. Illegal substitution on the defense, oh, 12 boy. men on the field. Half the distance to the goal, replay first down. I read that one completely wrong. 12 men on the field for Fitchburg. Uh, not a very costly penalty because of it, uh, it was only half the distance. Referee winds the clock again, which might be the most important thing here now for the uh, for the Red Raiders. It's interesting that Westboro is taking this much time in the huddle. Now they're coming up to the line, but there's less than 90 seconds to go, only three yards to pay dirt and to make it a one score game.
And Nakuchi trying to take it himself into the end zone. Held up there, does not make it. I think he gets two, but he doesn't get three. Okay, there is a stoppage of the clock here. Timeout, Westboro. Westboro will call time, but they only have 64 seconds to work with. Still two timeouts, but moving methodically down the field. It's got its advantages, but it's got its disadvantages as well. Please add 12 seconds to the game clock. Should read 126. That's, uh, 116, sorry, 116. Yeah, there we go. I was about to uh, <laughs> dunk on the bad math there. Yeah, but. the math was a little questionable initially, but uh, at the end of the day, you're going to get it right. We're going to go back to 116, apparently, on the game clock. Again, though, you know, the, the 12 seconds is not a huge difference necessarily. I think you're right, Daniel, when you say that Westboro is going to hope to punch it in here uh, and probably try something on the kickoff to regain possession. They'll probably, you know, every time they fail to punch it in here, they're going to lose a timeout, presumably, to stop the clock. I have a moment. I want to thank our crew once again. Nate Plenty, our director. Travis Falk, audio and graphics. Caitlin Mobili on replay. Andrew Govin and Robin Como on top of the press box on camera. Derek Terrell, Joe Tykowski, and Seth Rigby on the field. Around the one-yard line. Second and goal. Nakuchi under center, hands it off. It's a dive up the middle. It's a touchdown for the Rangers. All right, so things are uh, getting a little bit interesting here at Crocker Field on homecoming. So they got the touchdown they were looking for. It took probably a little longer than they would have liked, but they stuck to that. They stuck to their methodical drive. Unfortunately, we've got a player down. I think difficulty seeing who it is, Daniel. It is a Westboro player who's yeah. down in the end zone. Yep. Our report is that it's Alex Macario senior lineman. Now being helped up. Seems to be some sort of right leg injury. He'll be helped off by two of his teammates. Let's see, Mike Montalvo was one of those teammates. And the other one was uh, Alex Montalvo as well. So this is an extra point conversion of some significance, Daniel. If they make this one, it's a touchdown and an extra point to win if they can get the onside kick. But it's a few different things that need to go right for Westboro. This is just step one. But there's whistles on this one. Before the snap, offside. Defense, half the distance to the goal, retry. Raiders going to add another penalty yard to their account. So it's interesting, half the distance. Do you roll the dice and go for a two-point conversion now if you're the Westboro Rangers? You're, you're banking on getting the ball back, right? That's your, that's your chance to win this ball game. Do you, do you go for a two-point conversion here, which would make six a victory if you're able to get the ball back and obviously get the entirety of the, uh, you know, down the field with two timeouts, which is a tall ask, but it appears that Westboro is now going to shift over and go for a two-point conversion. So given the 36... So, so give it a yard and a half to go to get it. They try to plunge up the middle. Second effort Close. will get them there. If they get there. Yep, he's and in. They, and they got there. All right, so things getting even more tense at Crocker Field this evening. The offside is damaging to the Raiders. The two-point conversion, good, makes it 26-21. Again, Westboro, two more steps. They've got to recover the onside kick. Is step two. And then the third step is going to be they've got to actually get a touchdown with the 50-yard field to cover. Mm -hmm. And they're only going to have probably 65 seconds to do it. Now, is there any chance they kick it through here, Dan? Help me with the timing in high school football. They've got two timeouts. Is there any chance they kick it through? And could they have time on the clock if they hold 
Fitchburg uh, to a three and out and get a punt say. Oh, that doesn't look that doesn't look terribly promising. I would think you're probably going to lose about 50 seconds on that. Are you? Okay. And that's yeah. You'll get the ball with maybe 15 seconds left. That would be tough. Okay. So really, the onside kick is their option here. Yeah, they've got to kick it onside. I have to think. I would be surprised if they went for the uh, for the deep boot. We're going to get the good hands team here for the Fitchburg Red Raiders. That's what they're going to be looking at. Got to stack it. Set up your personnel accordingly. We'll put five right on the 50-yard line, four waiting in the 10 yards behind that. Nobody waiting back deep. And even if they don't try to kick it over everybody, Medina's back there and he can cover that distance well enough. He kicked it through. He does kick it through. Medina will handle it at the 18-yard line. And he's going to try to bring it all the way back. And guess what? He's going to bring it all the way back. Touchdown, Red Raiders. No flags, Daniel. Well, nice way to put an exclamation point on this, uh, on this game tonight with the Medina return for a touchdown. Seemed to be a couple of breakdowns there on the, uh, on the coverage team for Westboro. And Medina is also an outstanding athlete. Saw an opportunity, broke a couple of tackles, made a few good cuts, and he was home free. Also had blockers with him the whole way. He was the man in the back there as the center fielder essentially pulls that one in. And I knew he could cover that ground. So wherever it was going to land, he was going to come up with that football. But could he bring it back in? Indeed, he could. He brings it all the way back about 80 yards. So I saw number three holding up three fingers there. As that kick is oof, messy. Yeah, not good foot there. Off, <laughs> was off. that Medina's third touchdown in the evening, Daniel? Yes, it was. Okay, okay. So three TDs for number three. The crowd was giving him a lot of love, and now there's a little dance to accompany it, but uh, really outstanding, outstanding evening for not only um, Joshua Medina, but the entirety of this Fitchburg Red Raider team. Nice job today. So yeah, that was, that was an idea. We thought for sure they had to do the onside kick. I think they tried to see. All right, they didn't like their odds with the onside kick, so they tried to kick it deep. They were thinking maybe we can try to get this ball back. And what ends up happening? Medina finds a hole, cuts to the right, and he's gone. Yep. There are no more white shirts in front of him. A couple of red shirts to uh, to give him company as he as he scampers into the end zone with that one. But, it's a uh, convoy, and at that point, Fitchburg feels like we're going to win on homecoming. I wonder if Joshua Medina was a little surprised that they kicked it through. I know. That was a you surprising know, decision. You and I, and I would imagine plenty of the fans here at Crocker Field, assumed it was, a, uh, it was an onside kick. And, and they, we knew they were kicking it all the way through. And they were punished in the harshest possible manner. <laughs> With extreme prejudice. Up oh, and now that's a bad handle there. Picked up at the one yard line. And that's probably going to be the last gas for Westboro. Yeah. 48 and a half seconds remaining on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Unclear if Westboro will run a play or take a knee. What do you think, Daniel? I think they'll try running, but yeah, they've got 48 and a half seconds left. They've got two timeouts, but they also have to travel the field twice. It's, uh, it's I don't think it's happening. With the momentum, if they'd gone the onside kick, I think I would have liked their odds wouldn't have been terrible. No, I agree. They had been moving the ball pretty effectively in their last possession. I could see the surprise pass catching the Raiders off, and mm -hmm. it could have been, you know, they had a grasp, they had a handhold on this game, but after the decision to kick off there, we went through the math. It didn't seem like it was gonna work out too well if they got the ball back. It was only going to be a handful of seconds to work with and probably at least 50 yards to gain. I imagine there is some question there as to why they chose to kick it through. I'd be curious to know what the rationale was there. Sometimes it's darned if you do, darned if you don't. Makuchi throws incomplete. He was trying to find his receiver on the far side in Tom Cashman, but he couldn't cash in on that pass. And it's the first time tonight we've actually seen Makuchi throw. The one official pass attempt was Bramley. Mm -hmm. Tom 
43.2 seconds remaining, Daniel, here at Crocker Field. 11 point lead, 32 21. It appears the Red Raiders are on their way to the first victory of the season here. Homecoming night at Crocker. Not a better time to get it. Nakuchi scrambling in the end zone in deep safety territory, gets a pass off, and that is incomplete. And if it was caught, I think he was well out of bounds. It appears so. Nakuchi had some nice athleticism there to keep that play alive. And you know, he actually has an arm. Daniel, I mean, these, these, these last couple of passes that we've seen have been more or less on target, and he's got some, you know, some power behind those passes. It's curious that they didn't use him in that capacity for the entirety of the game. Yeah, it's very unusual. But again, you know, the plan was not to have him as a quarterback, I have to imagine, but you know, looking at the depth chart, we mentioned Andrew Pashota is hurt. Luke Molesky has 43 pass attempts on record in 13 completions. They feel like they've got a better shot there and Marco Micucci, he throws right side this time, and it goes through the hands of Luke Adley, junior captain, and that'll bring up fourth down. A lot of joy on that Fitchburg sideline. I'm watching some of the guys, including a couple of the guys that did not dress for tonight's game, and uh, nice to see for a Red Raider team that has worked hard this year, that has uh, you know, played their hearts out in every game. Um, to, uh, to finally come out with a W. It's really nice to see. They've worked through some adversity. Mm -hmm. Very challenging schedule, as we've said. Now the efforts about to be rewarded. Nakuchi on fourth down, gets a throw off right side. No one in the territory. And the Raiders will have the football with 21 seconds left. Now, this may sound like unsportsmanlike behavior, if you will. The Raiders are getting the ball at the six yard line. Mm -hmm. There is a non-zero chance that they might try to score here. If only for the fact that the margin of victory is 14 points and they are up by 11. The margin of victory. That's the maximum points, number of points you can get in power ratings for a victory, 14 points. Okay. Any win by more than 14 just gets turned into 14. They could take a knee here, but they might also try to score. Coaches, I imagine, are aware of that intricate little scoring anomaly. Looks like they're in the victory formation, however, Dan. They will take the knee. They're not going to try to rub it in any more than it already is. And so time will run out here at Historic Crocker Field. And on homecoming, the Raiders get their first victory of 2022. 32 to 21. Well, congratulations to the Red Raiders on that victory tonight. Happy homecoming to all the, uh, the hometown faithful here in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. A very interesting game. We knew it would be entertaining all the way through. These two evenly matched teams coming together and the Raiders come away with the victory, their first of the campaign as they'll go to one and five on the season and Westboro falls to 0 and six and any playoff hopes that they would have had have obviously gone away with that as they can't qualify for the playoffs at this point with that record. The Raiders are going to be in must win situation with next week against Neshoba, then two weeks time at Foley Stadium against Doherty. But for the Raiders, you know, they got things working tonight the way they would like. They really did. I mean, there was creativity on the offensive play calling. There were some outstanding long pass plays uh, from Luke Bolak, primarily to Joshua Medina. Um, really, really impressive display by these Red Raiders tonight. Um, and hopefully that can give them some momentum and some good feelings into the remainder of a very challenging schedule this year. Indeed, it was good to see Medina out there as well. We didn't see him at all last week and this week. He showed up and immediately, first time we said his name all night, he was scoring a touchdown. It was the first of three tonight for the senior receiver. And Josh Medina, he's been the most dominant receiver this year for the Red Raiders. He catches for 90 yards tonight. He adds four more for 87 yards. The Raiders 190 yards of passing offense tonight. Luke Bolak was 13 for 19 for 147 yards. So Harry and Wells had the 43 yard catch and run to Medina that really ended up capping off a tremendous first, tremendous first half, a tremendous second quarter for the Raiders. And you know, there were the hiccups. Penalties are still an issue. 117 penalty yards the Raiders ended up with. And it sort of got out of hand in the second half for that. See Joe Beveridge in the Westboro side discussing how 
this game went. It was definitely one of their closer games. That they haven't really been in one since their 40 to 28 loss against Sharon back in week number two. But they were in one tonight. You know, they were within one score with a little over a minute to play. But they made a decision that uh, they quickly regretted. Mm, I'm looking at the remainder of the schedule now for the Rangers. Looks like at Groton Dunstable, that should be a challenging game for them. Uh, Marlboro at home, Marlboro being 4-1 and one on the season going into tonight, and then at Algonquin, which might be a nice uh, nice matchup for them. That's that, uh, that Thanksgiving game. That must be their traditional uh, Thanksgiving rivalry, I imagine. Indeed it is, and there's okay. two consolation games that will be put in there, and for Westboro we can now safely say they are going to be consolation games in Week 9 mm -hmm. and 10, but those will come out in the days and weeks to come. And for Fitchburg High School, as we said, they'll be at Neshoba next week on the 21st at Doherty, at Foley Stadium on the 28th. And then two more games to be played. We believe one here in Fitchburg, one somewhere else. And we're not going to know until the end of the regular season where those games are going to be and when those games are going to be. Mm -hmm. But we can talk a little bit about games that are going to be coming up in the future here on FATV. And tomorrow we're going to be right back at work in our normal capacities. You'll be on the PA8 mic, and I'll be on the other side of the press box on this mic as we'll be bringing you Fitchburg State against Plymouth State Saturday, October 15th. That is tomorrow. Noontime starts. So we're going to be right back at it here on FATV. And let's not forget that next week we'll have Senior Day and Homecoming for the Falcons of Fitchburg State as they'll be taking on the Corsairs of UMass Dartmouth. Noontime start, and as we mentioned, John Gugarty should be back for that one. Well, that'll be exciting. I'll be back on the PA. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Daniel, again, as I've mentioned, I really appreciate uh, appreciate the opportunity that you gave me to come out here and, and do some high school football with you. And, and tonight was a really exciting game, and I really appreciate FATV and all the work you guys put into these, uh, to these, to these programs. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was great to have you on board, and we hope to see you in the uh, – I think we'll try to get you on a hockey game sometime later oh, this year. Oh, there we go. I know even less about hockey than I know about football, so that'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> of the four major sports, it's the last one I haven't gotten you on yet. <laughs> but as we mentioned, Fitchburg goes to 1-5, one and six, one and five. Westboro falls to 0-6. Oh and six. And So once again, we want to thank our underwriters one more time who help make these remote productions possible. They are Workers Credit Union, Rollstone Bank and Trust, UMass Memorial Health, Health Alliance, Clinton Hospital, North End Subaru, Unitil, Minuteman Press and the Sentinel and Enterprise. And one more time, want to thank our tremendous crew, Nate Glennie directing, Travis Falk audio and graphics, Caitlin Mobilia on replay, Andrew Govin and Robin Como on top of the press box, and Derek Terrell, Joe Tchaikovsky, and Seth Rigby on the field with the camera work there. And you can see how to spell Tchaikovsky there. That's a fun one. Mm -hmm. And... and trying to think if there are any other words you know for the Raiders you know for all the frustration they've gone through in the first five weeks of the season finally their efforts are rewarded tonight yeah and you could see the excitement on those young men's faces they were uh, they were pleased that the work paid off and they were able to get a victory tonight good for them we'll see the Raiders again in due time but for now we'll sign off here from historic Crocker Field the final score it was Fitchburg 32 and Westboro 21 so for Dr. Robert Hines and everyone here at FATV I'm Daniel Bolak saying thank you for tuning and we hope to see you next time. And until then, so long from Fitchburg.